were uh, actually can be classified into various um, uh, groups based on their uses. They can be classified as spices, condiments, and uh, as based on their medicinal uses and uh, edible and uh, ornamental also. Uh, in that we have so many species. Uh, this is just for information. And uh, some uh, to popularize these vegetables, so many international and national organizations are working. Uh, all over India and uh, world, we have CIAT, that is the uh, International Center on uh, Tropical Agriculture, and IIT, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, and International Potato Center. Uh, so all these are uh, international organizations. And at, in India, we have CTCRI, uh, that is a Trivandrum Tuber Crop Research Institute and uh, Potato Research Institute, uh, Central Potato Research Institute at Shimla. So these uh, institutions, they are working with, uh, on these ma major and minor tuber crops and they are developing so many varieties and also trying to uh, popularize the benefits of these uh, uh, tuber crops, root and tuber crops. And this table shows um, the nutritive value of uh, some minor, important minor tuber crops. If we observe that um, they are mostly rich in carbohydrates, uh, that is ranging from 63 to 75%. And in carbohydrates, the major proportion is starch. And that is ranging from 21 to uh, 80%. And uh, these crops supply, uh, compared to legumes and others, uh, supply protein at um, less percent. But when compared to potato, the percentage of protein supplied by these tuber crops is higher. And they are also rich in minerals like calcium, and some are rich in potassium, copper, and magnesium. And also they provide uh, fiber content also in considerable amounts. Now let us see in brief uh, all uh, the crops one by one. Uh, the very important crop and which is a danger going to be extinct, uh, that is West Indian arrowroot because it is widely seen in West Indies and uh, earlier days West Indies was uh, St. Vincent at West Indies. It used to supply uh, arrowroot starch to every country, each and every country surrounding that is USA, uh, Canada and uh, surrounding European countries. Uh, this crop was uh, uh, actually valued for its um, high value starch. The starch extracted, uh, starch powder extracted from arrowroot is actually uh, very quality wide compared to any starch extracted from tuber crops. And even with the corn flour also, it actually competes. So 80, 90% of the, 98% of that was actually supplied through uh, St. Vincent area earlier. But now it is slowly uh, that uh, arrowroot, availability of arrowroot starch is not that easy. Uh, it normally is a um, uh, annual herb. It is it, it grows to a height of 1 to 1.5 meters. And uh, it is it can be propagated through vegetative parts like bits, the tips of the rhizomes with two to four nodes and duration seven to 11 months. And uh, the yield of is generally 12 to 30 tons. And the rhizome starch yield is eight to 16% uh, range. If we see the quality characters of uh, lightweight and uh, the starch, it is lightweight and easily digestible. So it is a popular infant food because uh, small kids, they can easily digest. The, it can be used in milk products and also in bakery items and uh, puddings and all. And uh, even in uh, uh, when compared to other um, flows, it, it's easily digestible and palatable also. And uh, in Philippines, it, uh, the famous cookies and biscuits are prepared from arrowroot starch. And arrowroot starch uh, can be um, actually is a, can be supplemented, uh, sorry, uh, maize or corn flour, which is costlier than uh, costly and easily available. But uh, in place of corn flour, we can uh, use arrowroot flour, starch also. Uh, if we, uh, uh, the difference between cornstarch and this is actually if we add the water to the cornstarch, it becomes cloudy and opaque and it also changes the flavor and texture of that uh, solution. But if we add arrowroot starch, it won't change any color, flavor and 
texture it, the water would be colorless so uh, normally corn starch is used in uh, soups whereas uh, arrowroot starch is used in puddings and jellies because it won't change any uh, properties of the uh, that product prepared and also it is rich in calcium and more fiber but why we are going for corn starch means because arrowroot starch is not available uh, because the lot of germplasm of arrowroot were disappearing and uh, the, uh, there is very scarcity of the uh, lines germplasm lines of arrowroot nowadays we are not having many lines of arrowroot so that's why corn starch easily available and uh, that's why they are using corn starch even though this is a very valuable thing and these are the uh, in uh, philippines these cookies are prepared and biscuits also arrowroot biscuits also prepared uh, they are uh, for with digestion problems they eat these foods uh, this is also used as a stabilizer in homemade ice creams for preparing cakes and also in bakery products and it can also be a substitution for wheat flours also and also used in uh, face powder preparation so useful in cosmetic industries the next important group is aeroids we know aeroids like uh, um, taro and uh, elephant foot yam uh, but uh, minor aeroids also very important they are equally potential uh, they are uh, they all belong to family aeraceae uh, there are 110 genera and 2000 species are there in this group um, and this is uh, and these are well adapted to tropical and subtropical conditions so these can be identified as major group of underexploited root crops. So in aeroids, we are going to um, talk about Jain taro, that is alocasia species. Uh, alocasia is one of the most oldest uh, or ethnic uh, uh, tuber crop, uh, which is aeroid. And uh, the bigger one is actually the uh, tuber of, uh, sorry, comb of um, Jain taro. And the smaller ones are taro or colocasia. Uh, combs. So it produces uh, bigger combs and uh, that is uh, it is rich in um, high uh, structural carbohydrate content uh, because uh, the plant is actually having very straightened and bigger leaves. So even leaves also edible. Um, they have they are equally nutritious, but mostly uh, comps are um, uh, compared to other tubercles, these are less palatable. So the, they are with uh, acridity. They are they have they produce some acrid taste. Um, so they but uh, this taro is uh, it is having a, a nutritionally good quality, good quality like uh, different species. They have edible uh, uh, other species of taro. They are, they have edible combs uh, and they are rich in vitamin B B six and uh, niacin and also uh, to some extent calcium, magnesium, minerals and also. Uh, beta carotene also uh, to some extent. So this is one species. Actually, it is an ornamental uh, plant mostly, but it is uh, also um, also grown as um, grown for its edible cones. And another species is um, uh, uh, also edible. It is grown for its edible species. That is. Uh, Alocasia indica, it is locally known as Mangan uh, and uh, Sarachema, Chema and Charakanda. Uh, so, uh, compared to the first one, uh, Kakul Kukuleta, this species is most widely uh, available and uh, it is grow, it is a, eaten as a vegetable, cooked vegetable, and uh, also can be dried and as a processed vegetable. Then uh, another species, uh, Alocasia macrorhizus, actually uh, it is synonymous to indica, but it also produces different kind of uh, tubers, which are actually elongated uh, root tubers. Uh, all these leaves, petioles and tubers, for these crops, all the three parts are equally uh, nutritious uh, and they are rich source of uh, starch. So this Jain taro is can be considered as food of uh, uh, future generations and uh, we should, they are also slowly disappearing. We should uh, focus on these crops and preserve these uh, crops so that um, uh, by cultivating them on fertile lands, so they will be, their area will be expanded. Uh, it can also be propagated by corns and uh, also through uh, vegetatively through cuttings. So as I said, the stem or petioles and uh, 
uh, leaves of the uh, lacacia indica if we see that they are also rich in sugars and also in starch uh, considerable amount of starch so they are also eaten as uh, like our leafy vegetables then in anaids another important crop is tania that is xanthosoma sagittifolius um, this is also uh, grown for its uh, edible corms uh, but corms are with more of uh, acridity so caramels are very important in addition to the leaves and petioles uh, in this we have two species uh, white fleshed and pink fleshed types so white fleshed are more common and pink fleshed are uh, less common uh, but this is very commercial crop in uh, central africa and western african countries uh costa rica and dominican republics they are exporting this uh, crop and it is very tasty and delicious vegetable even in uh, india also in coastal andhra pradesh west bengal and odisha this crop is consumed uh, in during our uh, sankranti festival as a vegetable uh, and starch extracted from tania or xanthosoma is also highly valuable it is rich in more carbohydrates and also uh, if we see uh star that uh, starch content is 30% and uh, carbohydrate content is 72% and also having minerals like calcium iron and phosphorus and this is also well suitable for warm humid climate conditions prevailing in tropical regions of the world and this is a uh, staple food security crop with good economic and nutritional qualities in african countries because they are exporting not only producing and exporting this crop and uh, the starch contained in this large corms is about 98.8% digestible uh, so that's why this is very popular um, minor vegetable in african countries but in, in asian countries it is not so popular and it can be propagated by corms and suckers and uh, but the suckers will give more yield um the caramels actually as i said the corn it is more mostly side corns are uh, eaten as a uh, food uh, the caramels also they contain the uh, 17 to 26% carbohydrates and 3% protein and more of moisture content uh, and they have nutritional value comparable to potato in this we have uh, purple fleshed types also of course these are less common uh, that is xanthosoma xanthosoma violaceum so purple fleshed ones normally will have purple petioles whereas white fleshed ones they will have white uh, green colored petioles that is the identification and one more species is there uh, xanthosoma brasiliensis that is mostly grown for its edible leaves leaves are actually uh, eaten as a leafy vegetable like spinach and palak then uh, the species uh, which is a variegated type but it also produces uh, white flesh tubers that is xanthosoma uh, atrovirens then uh, in aroids the third important uh, minor crop is the giant swamp taro uh, it is because uh, this is most similar to colocasia and equally good to colocasia and cassava in nutritive value uh, that is uh, cytosperma merkuri uh this is considered as emergency crop and famine crop uh, during golden days because it can be stored in the field for more than 30 years without any damage that was the uh, uh, field storage capacity of this crop so they used to consume it as a famine and uh, drought crop drought food when the conditions are not favorable uh it is also can be cooked and uh, so dried and uh, can be stored for few months after harvesting and uh, nutritively it is comparable with uh, taro it is also uh, carbohydrates and calories uh, and it is also having more of fiber uh, uh, as as colocasia also and uh, it is also gluten free so this flour can be used as a substitute for uh, rice and uh, it can be cooked in various ways and for infants and people with dental problems this can be served as a puree so it's uh, so soft uh, and that's why even people with uh, who cannot uh, chew they can take this as a puree so you can see uh, the tubers of uh, swamp taro it is mostly grown in uh, submerged uh, soils and uh, water locked areas that way also this sarus is uh, food security uh, crop in um, problematic areas 
then uh, this another crop is chinese potato uh, which is also actually before introduction of uh, and uh, domestication of sweet potato chinese potato actually was the major crop in western africa and central african countries and chinese also they used to um, take it as an irish uh, irish potato uh, even um, the plant the tubers also look like uh, chinese uh, potato only and the taste and uh, flavor Uh, are different. Uh, actually, its flavor, uh, aroma. They are known for their aroma, light aroma, and good taste. Uh, but uh, potato taste is slightly uh, different. But this will give some astringent taste. But still, it is equally good as potato. You can cook it like potato or use in um, uh, different uh, uh, curries and all. Uh, this is. Um, also used uh, if you see the nutritive value this is containing high starch content that is um, sorry carbohydrate content that is 85.67% uh, of total carbohydrates also rich in potassium calcium and beta carotene uh, but it, its peel also equally rich uh, containing almost uh, 68% of uh, carbohydrates and potassium and calcium magnesium uh, and high amounts of beta carotene so uh, the both the ways uh, peel and uh, flesh of uh, chinese potato are uh, equally nutritious and uh, in china actually the, uh, this is the crop you can see it is in um, small herb annual herb propagated by corns but corns undergo dormancy so the sprouting is a problem but uh, yeah, you can uh, multiply through vine cuttings uh, the, these branches are uh, succulent and they are prostrate it grows like a bush so vine cuttings are uh, easily uh, propagate you can use it as a prop propagating material and uh, one of our uh, msc students uh, she uh, brought material from tamil nadu and she is working on this crop uh, just as an introduction in college of horticulture venkatraman gudem uh, um, this crop has come up well uh though we faced some initial problems but uh, it sustained well and has given bumper crop um and the taste was also equally like potato only so <coughs> then uh, coming to uh, legume uh, tuber crops uh, like even though they belong to uh, legumes uh, they also produce tuberous roots uh, uh, yam bean and winged bean Uh, yam bean the pods are not edible actually patchrage serosus and the other species also there ehipa and uh, tuberosus these three are cultivated so the pods are not edible but here the um, tubers are edible um, so uh, yam bean is cultivated for its crispy and sweet taste uh, tubers only not for pods other than it it has uh, all the legume advantages like nitrogen fixing uh for uh, soil fertility and other uh, legume uh, advantages are there but pods and seeds are not uh, edible when they are fully mature and these three species are almost uh, originated from uh, parts of central america uh, and there are two wild species also which have more medicinal value they are um, patchrizes panamensis and ferruginous uh, also from south american origin but the first three species are edible but uh, their uh, corns are edible uh, for uh, um, improving the tuber yield root, root yield the vegetative parts are normally uh, they are pruned their flowering shoots everything are pruned because the parts are not edible uh, but propagation is through seed why the seeds are not edible because they contain high content of toxic uh, polyphenols particularly rotenoids so these rotenoids uh, have hello been... hello madam yes uh, madam you are taking too much time madam please you have to finish only 15 minutes time is allowed okay quickly finish okay. madam there are many many things it's only 50 minutes and 2 minutes for discussion only madam please okay, madam. okay sir please i will finish in 5 yes. minutes sir and uh, please madam fast fast you have to do it lot of uh, already it's lunch time i think for you yes sir yes so rotenoids they have insecticidal properties so they can be used in insecticide preparations to kill thrips mites and uh, white fly larvae um so yam bean the, the, these tubers are white and crispy they are very tasty 
Uh, in India, they are known as uh, Mishitan, Shankalu or Sandeshalu. We have one variety also, Rajendra Mishitan, which is popular in Bihar. So you can see the variation in the tuber shape of Hepa and tuberoses. Um, and uh, that uh, shape and um, uh, taste also different. There are two types of uh, are available and uh, they are equally uh, rich, uh, more than actually rich in uh, protein content when compared to uh, potato. Uh, it, the floor of this can be stored because it has low moisture content, that is 5.8%. Mexican types are more promising because they produce uh, 140 to 150 tons, the bigger weight, 20 kg uh, weighing uh, tubers also can be produced. So these are the items can be prepared. Winged bean, uh, tomorrow there is one elaborate lecture. So I am skipping this crop because short of time. Winged bean also produces tuberous roots. But uh, every part of this uh, crop is edible, including flowers, shoots, and uh, pots. So uh, this also, the tubers also rich in uh, um, uh, starch and um, sugars. This is actually a rare combination. Starch and sugars uh, and protein all are uh, rich. So this can be a uh, divergent crop and can be exploited. And uh, curcuma species, mostly they are used as spices, but uh, some species like curcuma, amada, and domestica, they can be used even in, for their uh, starch con condition. Amada is mango ginger is used in pickle making and uh, because of its uh, flavor and mostly widely used in chutneys and pickles. And this is their analysis, uh, starch analysis. They also contain almost 10% of starch and other species, harita and arrangenos also, uh, can be used um, as feminine foods. And uh, then ginger species, that is uh, Casuminar ginger. Actually, it is a spice, but it can also be grown for its edible, uh, this one. And uh, they also have so many medicinal properties. And uh, uh, Queensland arrowroot or canna species, in this we have two types, ornamental types and vegetable types. Canna edulis and canna um, uh, indica, both are uh, uh, nutri equally nutritionally rich. And uh, this is the only tuber which can be eaten raw, Queensland arrowroot. And it is used in uh, preparation of mostly porridge and uh, this one, and also in uh, noodles, oriental noodles in China, mostly these are used for preparation of the uh, noodles fast foods also, which is they, they can be easily digestible for infants and invalids, people who are suffering from uh, digestion problems. But uh, in spite of all these advantages, there are, why they are not popularized? Because they have some limitations also, mostly they have high moisture content tubers in fresh form, so they cannot be stored and maintenance is a problem. So this can be solved by extraction of starch. When their starch is there, moisture content is low, so you can store it for longer time. And uh, the, they have high crude fiber content. So after extraction of starch, this uh, fiber should be degraded by uh, digestible enzymes uh, to use it as a livestock. So that is also a major limitation. And some contain anti-nutritional factors because of uh, uh, presence of some polyphenols and uh, anti-alkaloids calcium oxalate, so they should be removed. And the microbial contamination due to high moisture content, uh, these are some problems, but they may be overcome with some strategies also uh, through value addition. And first of all, we have to uh, make people aware of these crops and their health benefits, nutritional benefits, and uh, even research com scientific community also should focus on research to standardize uh, their cultivation practices and germplasm collection, removal of anti-nutritional compounds. And uh, we can uh, create ethnic food parks and caves and some food camp uh, campaigns and competitions. So, and also marketing. This is actually should be the first one. We should uh, ha have linkages with the um, industries so that farmers have buyback agreement and assured market so that the progressive farmers will come forward for the cultivation of uh, these crops. Uh, so future prospects, mostly these crops have uh, crop specific production technologies and varieties for high yield and quality. And they have great scope for product diversification, value addition, and they also help uh, develop prophylactic and therapeutic functional foods. So with this, I conclude that minor tuber crops, they, even though they are 
considered as neglected crops but they have good potential and we are facing a lot of uh, malnutrition hunger and uh, in younger generations obesity undernutrition problems even though we are taking high calorie food uh, we are not having any immunity that we face during corona situation our younger generations are more vulnerable compared to older people so that my also our older people uh, older generations are more immune to all kinds of this infections when compared to us so the, this this this, is, this might be the problem that we are taking very narrow, uh, limited uh, foods in our diet. So we should expand uh, our diet that it, it will be supplemented with all kinds of foods, uh, uh, whether they are cheaper or uh, uh, costlier, and uh, so that we can um, uh, um, encounter the problems in even in future and our future generations will be healthier and safer. Thank you. Hey, thank you, madam. Uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, a very uh, descriptive this thing, an excellent presentation, madam, actually. Uh, but uh, actually, our theme is uh, nutraceuticals. Uh, mm -hmm. You have given the ethnic uh, foods. Mostly our talk went on uh, ethnic, uh, the ethnic tubers as a food. But actually, our theme is nutraceuticals. But uh, you have given information there and there. But uh, uh, maybe in uh, you have to collect more information of this ethnic uh, uh, root crops as nutraceuticals. As we know that uh, it's a uh, uh, cultivation is the major problem. As is the cultivation is the major problem. But how to explore the part of this uh, tubers as a nutraceuticals for human health? Okay, madam. Uh, I'm, I'm also very happy that your students started working on this. It's excellent. And uh, your really presentation is excellent. But the only thing what I found is uh, less information related to neutraceutical. Otherwise, it's very good. Okay, madam. Okay, sir. Okay. Any, any... I, have, I have given information in the paper, sir. Uh, sure, uh, sure, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Okay. No, for me, I'm a, I'm a new fellow for this. No, I'm a new fellow for this. Yes. Value is there, sir. Uh, but ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, madam. Uh, I think, madam, Swarajalashi, madam, you can now uh, ask the audience to any quick questions. Is there? Madam. <laughs> Uh, and uh, excellent presentation, madam. Uh, really, we have to thank uh, God, Almighty God for providing uh, such a vast diversity in nature. And uh, most of the things only that uh, are uh, local people only uh, now at present. They are the they are, they are the source. Uh, information uh, about uh, also, uh, nutritional values, nutraceutical values. Uh, we have collected a lot of information and presented in this session. Thank you, madam, for uh, this uh, information. Excellent information. Uh, oh, I request uh, the participants, those who are uh, in uh, online and offline, uh, can ask the uh, questions for any questions. Hello, Swaraj Alesh, madam. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, madam, I think there are two laptops so paka -paka ne use this. There are a lot of nice sources. Yes, sir. Uh, or cell phones, so there are two operators. So, there are a lot of sound. Actually, uh, Usha Kumar, madam, is very clear. So I think there is problem in source. Definitely, I think check chain, madam. Ever use says to not laptops to pack use says or laptop cell phone. Okay, sir, use says na pack pack na allow us to do. Please check, madam. Okay, madam. Okay, thank. You. Any, any questions? Any questions from audience or students?
if no questions uh, uh, swaraja lakshmi madam please take decision whether uh, you are continuing or breaking for lunch hello sir sir we will break for lunch sir now the okay. time 3:20 we will yeah. break at 3:00 o'clock when 3:00 o'clock ah okay 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 thank you madam usharan madam thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am all participants sir we join at 3 o'clock all the participants will break for lunch will join after half an hour messi wait
welcome back to the session two on uh, vegetables as nutraceuticals. So we are continuing with the online presentations. So we request the first delegate that is uh, Jai Shri Vogalat. Yes, sir. I am here. Uh, can you able to hear me, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, shall I share slides or you are going to share it? Yeah, you can share, ma'am. So yes. Before starting, I would like to give a few instructions for all the participants, ma'am. Mm -hmm. so, uh, confined to the uh, scheduled time. For yes. oral presentations, it is five minutes, followed by two minutes of uh, discussion. So only a warning buzzer will be given before the uh, completion of uh, prior to 30 seconds of completion of time, ma'am. Yes. So for example, oral presentation. Okay. So for the websites, again, uh, the time will be changed. So it is only three minutes. For oral presentations, please go ahead. So your uh, presentation is visible. Your yes, voice sir. Is I'm focusing, fo focusing into slide mode. Okay. Okay. Now is it visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. You are visible and audible. Uh, good afternoon to one and all. Myself, Dr. Jayashri, Assistant Professor of Biochemistry from College of Horticulture, Bengaluru. I'm here to present a nutraceutical insight into ethnically known leafy vegetable, Hakarke, with a potentiality of nutrition-mediated health care of uh, pregnant women. Slides are moving, sir. No, ma'am. Slides are not moving and they're not in presentation mode. It's not in presentation mode, sir. Yeah, no, it's not in presentation. Sorry, sir, one minute. Now, sir. <laughs> No. It has moved, sir. No, it's not moving. Now, here it is moving, sir. Please exit, ma'am, and again log. Try to log in. Sir, but I'm here uh, moving them, sir. It's uh, going now, sir. It has moved. Sir, can I take in uh, this without uh, uh, slideshow mode, sir? It's yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay, so, uh, sorry for your convenience, sir. Uh, sir, I'm here to present on the topic nutraceutical insight into ethnically known leafy vegetable, hakarke, that is wild lettuce, with a potentiality of nutrition mediated health care of pregnant women. Uh, as we know, vegetable and fruits are good source of phytonutrients and nutraceutical compounds. Among them, wild plants are richer compared to the cultivated one. The use of these wild plants has become an integral part of culture and tradition of many indigenous communities around the world. So food, they serve as a food as a medicine. In addition to food, they do have the medicinal property. That's what uh, folk dietics Benno has cl clearly mentioned that. These food taboos and associated beliefs have a long history. One has to give a sound explanation through the scientific evidences so that we can uh, have the valuable clues to the health care. In this direction, we thought to enlighten on one wild edible leafy vegetable. Uh, this is the first report in India uh, that's called as Hakarke as a local name in Karnataka. It belongs to lettuce categories, that is uh, wild lettuce as a lactica cereola. Uh, first, in our study, uh, study, we thought to go and survey uh, for its occurrence, usage in diet, and, it, uh, and uh, its ethno-medicinal value. So in this direction, we uh, used a one questionnaires. Uh, 
which is having the parameters of uh, location where it occurs and uh, frequency of usage by the people, usage by different ways of uh, ways group of the people, availability in the local market, and usage in diet and medicine. These are the formulas which we we have we have used for the data. Uh, summarization and uh, representation. This is the site where we have gone for the survey to understand its uses and occurrence. Uh, we could able to found its occurrence in a northern part of Karnataka as well as in some, uh, central part, but not in a southern part of Karnataka, where it is found to be uh, in a uh, endemic to the uh, black soil, and uh, it has been evolved with the people because of uh, its importance. And usage was influenced by its occurrence. Wherever it is occurs highly, their usage was also high. So uh, this is the images which are indicating its occurrence in the black soil and uh, somewhat extent in the red soil also it could occur, but not in the laterite and sandy soil. This is the morphology of leaf, flower and uh, seed. And these images are indicating the uh, interviewing of the people during our survey. First line indicates the surveying to the people at the rural areas. Second line indicates the uh, ethnomedicine, uh, uh, this local medicine practitioners were asked for its importance in the ethnomedicine. Last line indicating the formulation in a food and uh, medicine as well as usage by the different age group. So among its wide uh, usage by the people, uh, it is being said our citation was more for the usage as a overall health of the people, but quite impressive uh, we found is of the in a usage of di uh, diet of the pregnant woman. Uh, that too, uh, uh, it is being uh, inherited as a traditional knowledge among the people and uh, it is being followed as a custom and tradition uh, among the rural uh, women. So first, as a we scientist, first, we, when we look into the crop for its uh, health and nutrition importance, first approach we do follow is the chemical and biological characterization of the crop. So among the chemical, that is phytonutrients, uh, which are known to be having the health and uh, nutrition importance are of the micro micronutrients. This comes as a vitamins and uh, mineral nutrients. Uh, in the uh, this uh, vitamins and mineral nutrients are so important for the human being to overcome the hidden hunger as well as more specific for the woman for its for her health uh, during her pregnancy especially to nourish her as well as fetus in this direction we have profiled this uh, uh, vitamins using the lcms ms technique and mineral nutrients by using the atomic absorption spectrophotometer these uh, vitamins and uh, mineral nutrients were found to be richer in this crop, which could be able to nourish. It is as more than the uh, moringa leaf. Uh, we could, uh, I could say that it is an uh, iron content is three times higher than the moringa leaf. So uh, with this uh, uh, means our uh, um, uh, invention or with the uh, analysis, I could say that on an average of 300 gram of this fresh leafy vegetable could meet the daily recommended micronutrient standard of pregnant women. So even uh, I made myself to put into the experiment, experiment during my pregnancy at the 8th and 9th month of pregnancy, I had kept this calcium and iron tablet away and I could able to surprisingly see that my uh, hemoglobin content was maintained to the 11 during my late pregnancy. So it has been imposed by my uh, elders in my home, uh, mother and uh, my grandmother. They had asked me to uh, completely uh, eat this during my pregnancy so that I was uh, maintaining 100 to 200 gram, even 300 gram consumption per day. And uh, so on soul and whole, uh, this leafy vegetable had maintained my hemoglobin to the 11. It was gone down to the 8. Uh, but with the suggestion of my elders in my home, I could able to maintain my hemoglobin and uh, I could able to succeed uh, with a good baby at the end. So with this, I would like to acknowledge funding from DST Serb CRG to conduct this research program. Thank you, thank you one and all. Thank you for giving opportunity. Open for discussion. Any one or two quick questions?
from the delegates attending online you can post your question via chat box or you can ask in the virtual mode if there are no questions so thank you ma'am thank you proceed sir proceed the next speaker so i request dr p gangadhar rao dr p gangadhar rao yes sir presentation yes sir can i start sir yeah yeah you can go ahead sir put it into the presentation mode the voice is audible the screen sir visible it is drawn by the presenter my presentation is on nutraceuticals regarding the mimotica simbaleria is endangered with ethnic vegetable of andhra pradesh if you see the nutraceuticals nutraceutical is term coined by the tata stephen depersley in 1989 nutraceutical term define itself it is having the nutrients and also having the medicinal importance if you see the vegetables every vegetable has its own nutritive value and also having the medicinal importance now i am going to uh, present here regarding the mimotica similaria if we see the mimotica similaria presence across the globe you can find only in the southern india you see the here uh, andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka and also some maharashtra area that too in uh, southern india it is concentrated in karnataka and also in rayalaseema zone so, so we can conclude that this mimotica similaria is a ethnic vegetable particular to south india this species nowhere can found across the globe here here we can see the taxonomical hierarchy and here bernard clam names are kachikai uh, madagalkai atrikai and in telugu kasarikai the botany of the mimotica similaria it is a monoecious crop and also tuber bearing perennial crop and it is a male and female flowers are different on the same plant it is a monoecious plant every plant part is having the its own medicinal importance here uh, edible part is the fruit and also seed regarding the introduction it is one of the uh, tuberbidaceae family found in only south india it is having so many medicinal importance and regarding the diabetes mellitus ulcer cancer diabetic uh, neuropathy hypoglycemic wound healing infertility hypolipidemic potentiality even uh, tribal uh, practitioners they are using as a one of the indigenous medicine if you are comparing the nutritional profile of the uh, mammatica similaria and also mammatica charentia means uh, kasarakai and also better god mammatica similaria is having the three times more calcium than the better god and also two times more vitamin c and also it is a rich in iron and also calcium okay here fruit is having the medicinal importance such as the stomatic stimulant laxative properties even a fruit juice can be taken for treatment of the gout rheumatism sepsis the spleen and liver disorders fruit pulp juice also having the indigestion diabetes diarrhea rheumatism treatments even tuber also having the about efficient medicinal property if you see the other mammotica species which are growing popularly in india they are the mammotica charentia common betrago and balsamina and dioca cochin sinensis but mammotica simbaleria is not growing majorly it is endemic to some tribal areas and also growing widely these are the culinary uses of the mammotica simbaleria we can use it as a deep fry steel boiled fry steamed cooked fry and fruit powder as other better gold fruit and even bendi all type of curries prepared by bendi same way mammotica simbaleria can be used if you see the nutrient composition of the uh, mammotica charentia and mammotica simbaleria if you are comparing the between a better gold and a simbaleria we can see the more nutrient profile in the simbal area if you are taking the moisture carbohydrates protein calcium potassium sodium iron is on par with better gold copper manganese in zinc you see the 
four times phosphorus and vitamin C. Only beta carotene is somewhat uh, backward. Remaining every nutrient potential of the symbol area is two times and three times compared to the our beta guard. That is regarding the nutrients. Regarding to the pharmaceutical importance of the mammalian symbol area, it is having the so much uh, responsible chemicals regarding the anti-diabetic activity, saponins, uh, charatin, vicin, mamadicin, anti-inflammatory activity controlled by the flavonoids, cardioprotective effects by the saponins, anti-clonary activities, hepatoprotective, neuroprotective, nephrotes, and anti-ulcer activity, anti hypercholesterol activity, anti-diarrheal, and anti-cancer. All these properties are regarding the uh, saponins and phenols contained by the fruits. Not only fruits, even uh, uh, tuber, and also these leaves also contain the same type of saponins that can be also used. Because fruit is the edible part, we can use it as a nutrient for pharmacy, plus pharmaceutical uh, value. You see, the from recently, Alagovan had conducted one research and histopathology pathology regarding the diarrhea. They taken the fruits and skin and seed separately, extracted with the lipolization. Lipolization will uh, separate the solvents, shock solvent extraction that will separate the lipid content. In the same time, they induce the diabetic in a rat, mice by induction of the aloxone. Aloxone will cause the diabetic in a mice. Extraction from the seed and also skin by treating 28 days to the mice, glycemic index is improved, lipid profile also improved, serum biochemical renal parameters, and also antioxidant activity all are improved by taking 28 days by mammatical symbol area force. So we can conclude that mammatical symbol area is having the most medicinal importance regarding the diabetic control compared to the even mammatical charantia. Only problem with mammatical symbol area is it is having the high food content of uh, fiber. It is not palatable for consumption. And also seed also having the, some sclerical, means it is having the more calcium uh, and also having the crunchiness. Consumers will not prefer for consumption. The palatability can be improved by crossing with our normal better word. We can improve the skin content or fleshy content of the fruit. And also, mammatical symbol area is having the powdery mildew resistance and also germany virus resistance. We can transfer to the our better word. So, in you know, both way, if a crossing is possible to better word, we can transfer the resistance to better word. Same way, better word fleshiness transfer to the symbol area. But unfortunately, it is not possible with any other better guard because it is having the deployed chromosome number 80 or normal better guard having the deployed chromosome number 22. And also it is having the genetic diversity studies compared to the Charantia, Barsamina, Dioka, Sahayaka, Cochin Sciences. Simple area is entirely different group. So only thing is to maintain the nutrition and also we can improve by agronomical some other crop improvement methods, we can improve the nutraceutical value in uh, uh, mammatical symbol area and also we can improve further the, further the palatability of the fruit. Here my overall conclusion is it is having this so much nutraceutical importance and also nutritional, mineral and vitamin C in the fruit. We can add this fruit as one of the part of diet, we can improve our healthy. And also it is an endangered species only restricted to South India. It is not propagated so many or a commercial level. And also uh, documentation and uh, are very poor in this crop. So emergency, you have to uh, take the documentation and screening of the mammalian symbol area is the only solution for protection of this species. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Thank you, Gangadhar. It's an excellent presentation. Uh, to try to restrict and try to be brief. The coming uh, yes. participants try to brief. And uh, if there are any questions, I request the participants to interact online or offline. If there are no further questions, you can post your questions in the chat box.
Okay, we'll go ahead with the, the other delegates. I request Dr. Janaki. Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Janaki, ma'am, you can present. Sir, is it visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible, madam. Put it in the slide mode, presentation mode. Sir, it is in slide mode only. Presentation mode only, sir. Okay. Sir, is it okay? Yeah. No, no, no. No, put it in the presentation mode. It's not visible. Sir, now? Sir, it is in presentation mode, sir? No, 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 it's not in presentation. Mr. Gangadhar, so meanwhile, you can answer the question which is being posted in the chat box. The question is, where can we find Momadika simple area? In Rayasima zone, sir. Anandapura and uh, Kadapa districts we can form. Only that is uh, restricted to South India, uh, Karnataka, Maharashtra part and Kerala. I shown the map in uh, international sites. Okay, I hope the participants' query has been answered. If there are any such queries, please post it in the chat box. Yes, ma'am. Janaki, ma'am? Sir, is it presentation mode, sir? No, no, no. Yeah, sir. you try to zoom it at least. Zoom it so that it will be there as such and we can change the slides. Yeah, zoom it. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, the maximum possible. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I can go ahead now. Okay. Good afternoon to one and all. Myself, Dr. M. Janaki, working as a scientist and head at the Horticulture Resuscitation Pradhapuram. Today, I am going with present development of foreign fresh sweet potato genotypes to combat malnut malnutrition, especially vitamin A deficiency. Uh, coming to introduction, sweet potato is botanically Ipomi potatoes, uh, belongs to a convenience family. It is originated from South America. Having chromosome number is uh, hexaploid, that is uh, 90. It is propagated by both the tubers and wine cuttings, that com but commercially propagated by wine cuttings only. The, it is grown for economic part, that is root tubers. Sweet potato is the second most important tuber crop and seventh most important food crop of the world. It is also known as a poor man fruits and a famine crop. And it is also have diverse range of positive attributes like high productivity with limited inputs and within short duration time. And having high nutritional value, it is also low risk crop and tolerance to various production stresses. It is also an important food and nutritional security crop, in, particularly in Africa, where malnutrition is a particular vitamin A deficiency is very high. According to American Diabetic Association, the sweet potato is a superfood for diabetics as they are high in fiber and have a low glycemic index. And uh, coming to orange plus sweet potato, it is a being rich in beta keratin and is a, um, terminated as a biophotophyte crop by nature to combat malnutrition, particularly in young children, pregnant or lact lactating women of small and marginal farming community. It is also gaining importance as a seafood source of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory nutrients and uh, having the uh, attributes like anti-oxidation, anti-cancer and the protection against liver injury. The RN plus sweet potato can be also termed as a three-in-one tuber as it integrates the qualities of cereals like high starch uh, and also fruits like the high content of vitamins and pectins and also vegetables like a high content of vitamins, minerals, and dietary fiber. 
they have also contain significant amounts of beta carotene protein carbohydrates dietary fiber zinc potassium other uh, vitamin c and also min other minerals and uh, vitamins so this is the main important uh, sweet uh, or important crop uh, particularly for nutrition nutrition food due to having a high rich uh, beta carotene which is converted to vitamin a so particularly uh, in africa countries we have to use the sweet potato and the sweet potato to combat malnutrition in younger children and uh, pregnant women so my main objective is to develop the organic sweet potato genotypes for i yield coupled with highest beta carotene content and total sugars coming to material methods i uh, to, during 2018 19 1920 2021 20, i have collected uh, open pollinated seedling seeds from best best parent, preferred parents like busona bukanti buza psp1 kalinga rnsp1 in terms of high yield and rich in beta carotene and total sugar for uh, tolerance or resistance to sweet potato weeding so a total of 87 open pollinated seedlings were uh, collected and evaluated during 2021 to 22 at hrs peddapuram in non replicated trial in plot size of 2 meters into 2 meters at a spacing of 16 into 20 cm which accommodates 40 plants per pl plot this is the development of orange plus sweet potato genotypes a total of 87 genotypes are evaluated this is the coming to results this is the performance of total 87 genotypes in the particular skin color flesh color beta carotene content dry matter total tuber yield and marketable tuber yield this is the performance of total 87 open pollinated genotypes coming to results at um, among the 87 50 were the orange flesh lines seven lines were recorded the total yield of above 40 tons per hectare and 36 lines were recorded the total yield of above 20 tons per hectare and 24 lines were recorded the beta carotene content of above 5 mg per 100 g this is the best among the 87 this is 17 are the best open pollinated orange flesh sweet potato genotypes having a beta carotene content of above 6 mg per 100 g uh this is the um, in terms of yield the best performing is 16 open pollinated genotypes the orange color highlighted at the uh, completely orange flesh open pollinated sweet potato genotypes uh, coupled with the highest tuber yield so the orange color highlighted 18 8 uh, entries are the best performing uh, orange flesh uh, sweet potato genotypes that are evaluated for one or two years that the next we have entered the multi locational train then go for the variety releases uh, thank you sir for giving me this opportunity thank you ma'am so thank now the topic you. is open for discussion if there are any queries you can post to the chat box or you can ask directly There are no further queries. I'll go ahead with the next speaker, the Doctor Meenu Kumari. Ah uh, yes, sir. Uh, available. Doctor Meenu Kumari, ma'am. Meenu. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm just I'm sharing. Uh, sir, it is operated from your side, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's been presented from our side, ma'am. No? Yeah, yeah. Please. You can go ahead with your presentation. Sir. Presentation is visible, sir.
Yes, ma'am. Slides are visible, ma'am. But it's not. You start your presentation. To, it's not visible to me. Is that for you, ma'am? It's not visible to me, sir. Not visible for you. Okay, okay. Just wait, 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 wait. Um, um. Slides in slide screen mode, sir. Yes, ma'am. There's the slide mode. Presentation mode. Presentation mode. Uh, okay, for me, screen is not visible, but uh, I can present. Uh, I, I should start, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, on behalf of Dr. G.C. Acharya, I am presenting this uh, 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 Arrhenium foetidum, a potential aromatic herb for tropical regions of India. Uh, so, uh, 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 about this crop, I just want to say that this uh, Arrhenium foetidum, it is also known as a spiny coriander and it is a perennial, it is a perennial medicinal herb uh, which is grown in tropical regions worldwide. Uh, in short, I can say that uh, this uh, Arrhenium is uh, uh, the replacement of, or not replacement, but it, it can act as a substitute of coriander. Uh, because of its uh, aromatic aroma, aromatic smell that is exactly like of coriander. So this is indigenous to tropical America and Caribbean islands. And uh, this Arrhenium species is uh, also found in coastal Odisha, which has a strong aroma similar to the seasonal coriander. Its leaves and branches of the plant are used to garnish and flavoring foods. And it is substitute for coriander that I already said. Uh, and uh, coming to nutraceutical, it is having uh, so many applications like it is anti-clastogenic, anti-inflammatory, anti-helminthic, anti-carcinogenic properties as well. Uh, so uh, why we started this study that is what i want to say that uh, because uh, uh, coriander is available in limited during summer season we are finding a lot of uh, sensitivity of this uh, coriander to biotic and abiotic stresses that's why this crop is having a, a commercial importance or we can say industrial importance and uh, this um, and the second reason is that this Arrhenium is uh, grown locally among tribals of Odisha, also Andaman, because uh, they are having improved variety also for Arrhenium. And uh, in small pockets of other um, small pockets of our country in uh, uh, among tribals, and uh, that's why we started uh, its uh, collection, their characterization uh, for leaf traits and its phytochemical profiling as well as molecular studies. We also did. So with these gaps, we started this study. Uh, so, uh, our first objective was to collect, evaluate, and conserve Arrhenium genotypes from Odisha. And second was phytochemical and molecular characterization of this species for uh, trait specific Arrhenium improvement programs. Uh, so, coming to its germplasm evaluation for antioxidants, uh, at first I want to say that how we started, uh, we, uh, we surveyed uh, Odisha uh, various pockets and uh, uh, only four genotypes we found. However, these four were not having significant variability for their uh, agro, for their horticultural uh, traits. Uh, still, we evaluated all those four. And uh, uh, it is seed loving crop because uh, when uh, uh, if we are not giving it seed and uh, it is uh, uh, exposed to high temperature, it will come to bolting starts. That's why it should be grown in 50% seed condition. And uh, the interval period between two harvesting we found 30 to 35 days. Uh, it is uh, not a pulling type. We have to cut and then again we will uh, cut it. So yield per unit area per harvesting we found 300 to 400 gram and high temperature induces bolting. Propagation uh, it is made through seed and uh, its germination takes a comparatively longer time, that is 40 to 45 days. Uh, coming to antioxidant properties, uh, so sulfur content, uh, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, phenols, frap uh, activity like that is antioxidant, flavonoids, and DPPH. These, uh, uh, these traits were measured and uh, mentioned here also their range among four genotypes. 
Uh, here I want to say that it's a functional group identification. That is what we did through Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. This FTIR is generally used to identify functional group. As I said earlier, that its aroma is similar to coriander. Uh, that's why we try to find that uh, which functional group is uh, present here, which is uh, causing this uh, uh, particular aroma. And uh, so here, uh, this is the uh, uh, FTIR spectroscopy, uh, FTIR spectroscopy reason, uh, which were characteristic to this Eryngium crop. And then coming to phytochemical profiling, this was done through GCMS. Uh, sorry, the, uh, this is also the peak. What I shown earlier, it was the range of uh, range of wavelengths, and uh, it is showing the peak of coriander and eryngium. As we can see here, that uh, that, that this red one is coriander. Uh, red one peaks are for coriander, and blue one is for eryngium. So we can see here that uh, all the uh, uh, all the important functional group were exactly similar as that of coriander so that's why uh, we can say it is a substitute of uh, coriander uh, this is the result of uh, gcms gas chromatography mass spectrometry here we identified 77 compounds in the leaf and 79 compounds in the branch as well uh, so in that our uh, genotype and uh, the sincere oils uh, which were uh, were major portions of aldehyde and ketones which comprises 54.63 percent followed by hydrocarbons 22.07 percent alcohol 7.67 and remaining 5.69 percent were acids and oxygenated compounds uh, here this uh, this is a long list that's why we just uh, uh, to uh, to present it we identified it in these major four groups and the volatile compound that is the most important thing is the 10 undecanal it was found as a major component in leaves and branches because this 10 and decanol is solely responsible for this its aromatic uh, aromat aroma uh, this is about the molecular characterization of eryngium foetidum. As, uh, as I told that uh, it was collected from uh, pockets of Odisha and uh, it was uh, uh, and it is also available. It's improved varieties available from uh, Cary, uh, that Andaman Institute. Uh, so that's why we characterized it uh, uh, in comparison to Cary 1, that is the improved variety of uh, eryngium. So this is study here in this study, we focused for the DNA barcoding. Here, chloroplast plastic gene that is MATK, Kim, MATK, and RBCL, and uh, nuclear ITS2 gene. In these two eryngium genotypes, uh, 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 that uh, one is from our East Coast region and one from Andaman. So that's why we compared uh, uh, from these four, uh, uh, four regions, uh, chloroplast plastic regions, and the results revealed that this uh, MATK, MATK is the most important. Uh, uh, we found that it is discriminating among uh, those two genotypes. MATK is very important, uh, was showing results. Um, so this is the result, what we had uh, found from DNA barcoding, ITS2 secondary structure predictions result. And uh, here we found that uh, minimum uh, free energy and the highest uh, uh, energy for Andaman, this Eryngium AND is for uh, Andaman, our species, and 275 to 280 base pair and 145 to 150 base pair. These two, uh, these two geno uh, genomes were uh, discriminated by MATK genes. And this is the secondary structure predictions you can see here. Uh, so in brief, I can say that the eryngium and corindium prof coriander profiles were overlapped and similar patterns were observed for both. The volatile compound 10 and decanal identified as the major component in leaves and branches of eryngium. And the MATK gene is better in species discrimination. And uh, this can also be uh, used uh, uh, for uh, other species if we are founding in any parts of uh, India, we can identify with this MATK genes. Uh, and just in one slide, I want to show the achievement that we conserved uh, this important species uh, as it is propagated with seeds. That's why we conserved its seed at ICR NBPGR and obtained this IC number. And we had made two publications uh, with our studies. So future thirst is that it is very important and uh, definitely it is uh, underutilized. So its cultivation aspect need to be standardized and popularized and improved varieties and mass multiplication studies need to be prioritized. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am, for your presentation. It was an excellent presentation. And I ask, I request the participants to stream your video. And next participant, Dr. A. Pavani Rani. I request Pavani Rani to present. Yes, sir.
Any queries in the previous presentation? You can interact or post your uh, query in the chat box. If there are no further queries, thank you, Meena Kumari, ma'am. So for your excellent presentation, exactly. I request Dr. A. Pavani Rani to go ahead with the presentation. Yes, sir. Sir, I'll start screen sharing, sir. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You can go ahead. Sir, can you see, sir? Is it in presentation mode? So please share your screen. Sir? Screen even this? Oh, it's not visible. One minute, sir. One minute. Hmm. Now, sir? Yeah, now it's visible. Okay. Go to the presentation mode. Okay, sir? Yeah, it's nice. Yes, sir. It's sir, myself, Pavani Rani, pursuing MSc in service. Today, my topic is on Chinese potato, colias, rotundifolias, a smart functional food. It belongs to the family Labiatae and Lamiaceae, 2N is equal to 64 chromosome number and native to tropical Africa. It has various uh, names in different languages. In Hindi, it is called as Kurka and Kannada Samrani Gadda. Malayalam, it is also called as Kurka and Tamil Nadu Sirikalangu. In English, it is called as Hausa Potato, Chinese Potato, Madagascar Potato, Coleus, Julu, Far Prafra and Salaga Potato. And coming to its nutritive value, it has a moisture of 76%, protein of 1.3 grams, fat 0.2 grams, carbohydrate 21, fiber 1.1, and it has a calories of 94 kilocalories of energy, calcium 17 mg, iron 6 mg, thiamine 0.05 mg, riboflavin 0.02 mg, niacin 1 mg, and ascorbic acid 1 mg. It is, it is consumed raw or cooked, sir. And it is eaten with uh, often with rice and it's made into alcoholic drinks also. Young tubers are often used in soups and vegetable dishes. They are cooked with uh, spices in various combinations with other foods like beans, tomato and all. Even occasionally leaves are cooked as vegetable. Coming to its health benefits, uh, it has good health benefits and nutraceutical effects. Uh, heart health, it lowers the blood pressure. It has anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties. Dysentery, it uh, cures dysentery and diarrhea when the leaves are uh, taken as decaution, the, they, they treat uh, diarrhea and dysentery and digestive problems, uh, they treat bloating and uh, abdominal joint pains and all. Respiratory problems are also cured. They have anti-spasmodic activities and they treat uh, uh, bronchitis and uh, asthma. For uh, skin care, they are used in Africa, they are used for uh, the leaves have a camphorous aroma, sir. So they are used as a body rub and cleansing. Tubers are the economical and edible parts, sir. The plant produces different shapes like round egg potato-like tubers, usually two to five centimeters long. They occur in clusters at the base of the stem in three to ten. They are brownish black or reddish green with rough skin, and they form new tubers and clusters around the bases of the stem. Coming to its uh, uh, propagation. It is an aromatic succulent quadrillant uh, stem and it is propagated by stem cuttings and tubers. And the time of planting is August to October and it can be planted in January to September if irrigated crop. And spacing is 45 to 30 centimeters. Coming to its fertilizers, 80, 80, 150 NPK kg per hectare. And it comes to harvesting in five to six months and yield is uh, 10 to 20 tons per hectare. And improved varieties in India are Kovan Clonal Selection 1991 TNAU Coimbatur, Sridhara Clonal Selection 1993 CTCRA Trivandrum, Nidhi 2000 RARS Patabi KAU, and Sufala 2006 KAU Kerala. And uh, at our college at VR Gudam, we have introduced Sridhara variety as introduction crop with the design of FRBD with 12 treatments and 3 replications and 2 factors of uh, 
spacing with four levels and fertilizers with three levels this year. And treatment combinations are like this. Spacing with four levels, 45 into 10 centimeters, 45 into 20 centimeters, 45 into 30 centimeters, 45 into 40 centimeters with NPK levels of 60, 60, 100 kg NPK per hectare, 70, 70, 125 kg NPK per hectare and 80, 80, 150 kg NPK per hectare. Coming to the conclusion, the experiment is under still progress and up to now I have observed that Chinese potato recorded maximum growth parameters at a spacing of 45 into 30 centimeters followed by 45 into 40 applied with 80, 80, 150 kg NPK per hectare. And uh, as a tuber crop, it has more nutraceutical and values. Further studies have, be, have to be done. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. So thank you for maintaining the time, Pavani. So if there are any requests to the participants to interact. Sir, if there are no queries, we can go ahead with the, the other presenter, Dr. M. Yogananda. So there's a question in the chat box. <laughs> Dr. Pavani, you can interact. Sir, yes, sir. The question is cultivation in any state. Is it under cultivation? Yes, sir. It is in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, sir. And now we introduced in Andhra Pradesh for the first time, sir. In our, in our college, we introduced it, sir. It is in Andhra and Tha it is not in Andhra, sir, at present. Only in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, they are growing it, sir. It is in cultivation there, sir. Okay, I hope the presenter has answered the query. The next presenter, Mr. Dr. M. Yogananda. There is another query in the chat box. What are the market prospects? Market prospects, sir. Yeah. In Tamil Nadu, it is uh, sold up to 1 kg for 68 rupees, sir. When I went for procuring the material, I, I got to know the amount uh, of the price of that, sir. 1 kg is uh, 68 to 60 to 70 rupees, sir. There it is uh, more suitable, sir, for uh, market. And uh, it is an introductory crop now, no? We don't have any access for market in our uh, Andhra Pradesh, sir. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pavani, uh, what is the nutraceutical value of this crop? It, it has anti-cancer anti and anti-tumor activities, sir. And it has very less uh, calories. That means uh, obesity and overweight people can take uh, easily, sir. With less calories, they can uh, maintain it, sir. It's under process, sir. Okay. Thank you, Pavani, for the clarification. Okay, sir. For discussion, I request uh, next speaker, Dr. M. Yogananda. Dr. M. Yogananda. Is he there? Dr. M. Yogananda. If he's not present, we'll move on to the next speaker. Dr. T. Susila. I request the next speaker, Dr. T. Susila. So may I invite the next speaker, Dr. T. L. Bhutia. Susila. Uh, Shall I see my screen then, sir? Mute. Um, mute. Uh, please unmute yourself. I, I have unmuted myself, sir. Dr. Bhutia. Am, am I audible, sir? Am, am I audible? Dr. Bhutia, 
please hold on for a second dr p susila is online okay okay sure, sure. she is trying to present just uh, give me a second okay okay sure. Madam, yes, madam, your presentation is visible. Put it in the slideshow mode. Voice is not audible, ma'am. Your voice is not audible, ma'am. Madam, there seems to be a technical glitch. I'll come back to you later. Yes, Madam, can we start with uh, Dr. T. L. Bhutia, ma'am? Okay, we'll start with Dr. T. L. Bhutia. Okay, sir. Then shall I share my screen, sir? Yeah, I can see you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, Share your presentation. Is it visible, sir? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yes. Put it in the slide show mode, presentation mode. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. Uh, a very good afternoon uh, to the respected uh, chairman of the session, co chairman, uh, my dear seniors, and my dear colleagues. A bit louder, ma'am, and put it in the slide show mode. Uh, it is in slide show, actually. Is it go ahead, ma'am? Okay. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. T.L. Bhutia. I'm a scientist uh, working at ICR Research Complex for India's Reason, Sikkim Center. Uh, my topic is uh, Tupista Clarkai. It's a nutraceutical which underutilized vegetable of Sikkim, Himalaya. Uh, Tupistra, it is a monocotyledon uh, plant that uh, belongs to the family Asparagaceae family. Uh, Uh, locally, it is known as Nakima in Sikkim. A total of 31 species has been reported in the world, which is distributed in the south and southeast of Asia, including Nepal, Bhutan, India, Myanmar, China, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia. In India, nine species has been reported. That Lights are not are moving. Hello? Can I continue? Slides are not moving. Okay, no, I am in introduction slide. Okay, go ahead. Uh, in India, nine species has been reported. They are like Tupistra asihoi, Clarkai, Khasiana, Leonidae, Mutans, Nagaram, Extrosandra, Astrolipsana, and Tupistroys. So out of these nine species, six, they have been endemic to Northeast India. So it's a perennial in nature, plant height at about one to two meter tall. In fluorescence, they are the edible part. 
which is a terminal spike and they arises from the uh, base of the leaves. So this uh, flowers, they are purple in color. Uh, this plant, they are a moist and shade loving plant. It is mostly found in wild and like uh, cultivated uh, only in the home garden for self consumption. So these flowers, they are a potential source of natural antioxidant, which helps in the prevention of oxidative stress related diseases. It is the belief of the local people that this uh, vegetable is very good for diabetic as well as for the hypertension uh, patients. Well, uh, now like uh, some of the, uh, this, there is some research which has already proven this hypothesis as well. Madam, are you still in this introduction? Pardon? No, yeah, yes, I'm still in the introduction. So this is the, uh, this is the whole plant which looks like a large cardamom. And this is the plant, uh, this is a flower, like uh, the one red, with the red arrow, that is like a, which emerges from the base of the stem. Then this is the harvested product. So this is under influence vegetable in Sikkim, uh, like, but it is very popular in the local people because of its uh, high medicinal value. Uh, but the disadvantage is that like uh, it is available for a very short duration, like that's only for like say like one to two months, which is uh, this uh, flower. It starts uh, flowering from uh, September, uh, like the second week, and like ends by the first week of November. Um, go to the third slide. Go yes, to the third, the third slide. slide. I hope you are in the third slide. This is third slide. Yeah, but we can't see the third slide. It is still showing the first slide. Okay. The title slide. So I'll try yes. again. This is first slide. Yeah, this is first slide. Second so slide. Third. So is it visible? No, because it's not moving. I'm saying Please unshare and share. Okay. I'll unshare this again. Okay. I just realized it. Is it audible? Is it visible? No, ma'am, it's not visible. Can you please do it from your side? Then I have already sent my slides also. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So we'll share it from our side. Yes, sir, please. You want share, ma'am? Stop sharing. Yes, yes, I have stopped sharing. Okay. Is it visible, ma'am? No, it's not. Dr. Butia? No, 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 sir. It is not visible. It's not visible. No, sir. Background is open. Start sharing again. Can I try again, sir, once?
Okay, ma'am, is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it is visible now. Yeah. So Go shall I start the beginning or shall I continue from the first slide, sir? Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Okay. Yes. Uh, can you please go to third slide? Go to third slide. We will go to the third slide. You can start from third slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Third slide. Uh, so this is the plant uh, which looks like large cardamom. This is the whole plant. And then the second one that uh, like with the red arrow is like uh, the inflorescence which is emerging from the base of the plant. And the third uh, that third picture it's like uh, it's a harvested produce. So this flower actually, uh, this vegetable, it is like uh, underutilized, but in Sikkim it is very popular because of its high medicinal value. And like, uh, but the disadvantage is that like it is available for a very short duration, uh, like it starts from uh, flowering from September and end by the first week of November. So like uh, because of, uh, to make this uh, vegetable available throughout the year, an experiment was carried out uh, in like uh, for the development of the value added products, especially for the dehydrated uh, this, uh, flowers. Can you please go to next slide? Can you please go to next slide? Yeah. Uh, so different drying methods were followed to develop this uh, dry dehydrated produce. Uh, There's uh, sun drying, shade drying, oven drying, and solar drying with different types of blanching, with blanching and without blanching. Next. So like uh, the minimum days taken for the drying was uh, by oven drying, which was only, uh, only for the four to five days followed by sun drying, which took only for 10 days. Uh, however, this uh, solar drying, it took the uh, like, uh, maximum number of days for drying, like around like 25 days. But then uh, like uh, the moisture percentage, even after the complete drying, it was like a good, uh, it was highest in case of uh, solar drying, without blanching. Uh, next slide, please. Next. So these are some of the pictures, like uh, from the picture, we can see the different, uh, the, the different treatments. Here, without blanching, uh, the uh, dehydrated produce, so that, uh, this is the final product. Uh, without uh, this one, uh, the, uh, blanching, like uh, the color of the uh, produce was more appealing as compared to the produce uh, with that uh, product with the blanching one. Next. Ne no, no, just, uh, yeah. So these are different uh, methods which were used for drying, different drying techniques. And like uh, actually, uh, this uh, like uh, many researchers has already completed some of the works in these different species of Tupistra. However, uh, this in Tupistra, uh, like uh, Clarkal, which I'm talking right now, like there's no work has been carried out till date in internationally or either na nationally. So a lot of work has to be carried out, uh, yet to be carried out in this species. However, I'll be presenting some of the nutraceutical value or the importance of different species of this uh, Tupistra. Can you please go to next slide? Uh, which has been reported by different researchers. So uh, this uh, Jai China in 2018, he has like uh, studied the nutritional composition of this Tupista albiflora flower extract. And like uh, they have uh, identified uh, like they are like a good amount of this nutritional composition such as fat, protein, carbohydrate, uh, vitamins and different antioxidant activity or the, the, the phenol, different phenolic compounds. So like in this uh, first uh, table, we can see that the protein contained in the white flower of this albiflora was 29.60 percent, which is like uh, which uh, which is like higher than the like WHO protein standard also, and it is also higher than the vegetable that's a uh, moringa. Can you please go to next slide? So these are the like different phytochemical compositions which was uh, like identified uh, from this uh, Tupistra albiflora flowers. Next slide. So uh, not only the flowers so that is important. But that is the high nutritional value, but even the root of this crop, they have uh, like they have very high nutritional value uh, because this uh, this one of the uh, researcher that is Chung and his co-worker in 2019, they have studied uh, this root extract of Pistra nutans, that's another species for antioxidant activity, antimicrobial activity, alpha glucosidase activity. So like uh, they have found out like uh, this uh, different phytochemicals which has been listed out in the table too. Uh, like uh, and among this one in the root extract of Tupistra nutans, and among this one the salicylic acid and the picomeric acid. That was the, uh, the these two the phytochemicals, the phenolic compounds. They were the most the predominant one, which was like more than the 57 percent, uh, like a uh, phenolic compound. So and like uh, along with this one, they have also identified one of the essential amino acid that is L-phenylalanine. And like uh, this uh, pro catechoic acid, one of the phenolic compounds, like which which has a very good uh, like uh, inhibiting 
or uh, like in any this inhibiting activity against this uh, alpha glucosidase activity so which can be uh, which is very good for this uh, developing some of the like uh, nutraceutical uh, produce or the product of this uh, diabetic patients so can you please go to next slide so they have also studied the antimicrobial activities of the root extracts of tubicular nutrients so here in the picture we can see like uh, like uh, first uh, like they have uh, because all the pathogens they have also reported that different pathogens have different sensitivity towards different uh, this uh, phenolic compounds so they have taken this uh, two uh, this staphylococcus aureus and this uh, e coli so here in the first one that's control and the rest two are the treated with a different concentration here these are uh, red ones it indicates that uh, dead cells and the green ones it indicates the uh, live cells so in control like it is like a, there is a no control all it's a, like a green a green dots on it is visible however like the once the concentration of this phenolic uh, compounds is increasing the number of dead cells are also like more predominant so here we can say that like uh, but uh, we can see from this uh, like uh, these uh, photographs that the concentration of like 0.12 mg per ml of this phenolic compound it can completely suppress or completely inhibit the this uh, different pathogens not the majority of the pathogens they can inhibit their uh, protein but however uh, how, how, however like we can uh, like this uh, we cannot say that all the phenolic compound will act uh, similarly to uh, like uh, similarly to all the pathogens so in conclusion, we can say that this phenolic compound that is present in this different tubicular species that contributes significantly to the antioxidant, antimicrobial activity, and alpha glucosidase inhibition potential. So it can be a good candidate for extracting natural antioxidant, antimicrobial, and anti-diabetic agents. So this pharmaceutical, which can uh, which can further be utilized by the pharmaceutical companies for developing uh, these uh, medicines. Uh, further, but studies are required to isolate and identify individual phenolic compounds, focusing all the species that is available. And in vivo studies are the need of the hour to better understand the anti-diabetic and anti-cancer mechanisms. So, like on and in order, like on uh, along with that one, like uh, for the promotion of this crop and to increase the income of the uh, farmers, like value addition, like uh, products needs to be developed. Thank you. So thank you, ma'am, for the presentation. I request the. Delegates to interact and pose any queries. If not possible, you can put it in chat box. If there are no further queries. May I go ahead with the next presenter? Dr. T. Sushila, ma'am. Dr. Shushila, ma'am? Yes, you can go ahead now with your presentation. Okay, thank you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, yes, okay, yes, thank you. Right. You can share your presentation. Yes. Good evening, respected chairman and co-chairman. I am Dr. Susila, working as senior scientist and head banana research station, Pulivendula. India has a rich and highly diverse food, and its various rights are closely linked to social identity, religion, and other cultural influences, as well as local agricultural practices. Most of the vegetables presently consumed by Indian people are not native to India. For example, tomato, potato, cauliflower, chili, spinach, cabbage, and the list is long. All these vegetables are introduced into India from different parts of the world. Cultivated or uh, widely available leafy vegetables, tubers, and roots of plants are essential ingredients of food and also provide seasonal immunity and cure for the ailments with their medicinal properties. Indian traditional foods are also considered as uh, functional foods. The shift from traditional to the Western dietary pattern has become the leading cause of the growing burden of uh, lifestyle-related diseases like diabetes and hypertension, etc. Banana flower is an edible 
edible bud that grows at the end of the bunch belongs to Musaceae family, and these banana flowers are also known as uh, banana blossoms and banana hearts. It is used as a vegetable that is consumed in many Asian countries such as Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Thailand, and India. The flowers are large, pointed, and crimson colored with some yellow and others are pink. Banana flower is actually the male flower which was removed from the bunch after emergence of all hands. Banana flowers have a starchy, fibrous consistency and a neutral, subtly bitter and fruity in flavor. The outer dark colored bracts are not consumed, but they can be used as, uh, for a decoration purpose. After each bract is removed, the small florets can be separated from their substamens and set aside for use with the uh, flower's heart. These florets are yellow, white in color and they uh, oxidizing quickly once exposed to the eye. Once the bracts have been peeled away, a yellow white heart can be seen and it can be sliced into pieces and incorporated into the seeds. The heart is the most prized portion. It is dense, semi-fibrous and starchy. It is recommended to immerse slices of the banana flower in salted lemon water or vinegar water for at least 20 to 30 minutes to extract some of the bitterness. Banana flowers can be added to fresh fruit and green salads and younger flowers will have a sweeter flavor for raw preparations. They can also be minced into dips, dumplings and paste. Banana flowers can be lightly steamed and served with dips similar to artichoke, boiled in coconut water and stir fry or incorporated into curries and soups. The flowers can also be fried into patties, soaked in flavoring, cooked like uh, fish fillets or sorted into vegetable, rice and noodle dishes. In Thailand, young banana flowers are commonly served raw. In, Indian, in Indonesian cuisine, banana flowers are mixed with pork and served as a festival appetizer. Raw banana flowers should be immediately consumed for best quality and flavor. The flowers can also be wrapped in plastic and stored in the refrigerator or cut pieces can be placed in a sealed container in the fridge for two to three days. In addition to fresh banana flowers, the buds can also be found canned or frozen for extended use. In rural Indian villages, it is used in many different ways. It is used as a fresh vegetable and in preparation of pickle, sabzi, and chips. It is a part of uh, different cuisines in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, and West Bengal. Coming to the composition of the banana flower, banana flower is a rich source of fiber. It contains 70% uh, of fiber, 53.8% of carbohydrates, and 19.6% of protein. It is rich source of various minerals like potassium, sodium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. It is also rich source of uh, alkaloids like uh, tannins, phenolic compounds, uh, saponins, terpenoids, uh, and steroids. Five fatty acids are present in banana flower. They are uh, palmitic acid, stearic acid, folic acid, linoleic acid, and alpha-linoleic alpha acid. These will lower the risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases. Banana flower contains uh, flavonoids. And presence of flavonoids lower the risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases by lowering the oxidation of LDL cholesterol. Coming to the health benefits of the banana flower. It reduces the risk of uh, sugar levels. It, uh, it reduces the sugar levels in blood and uh, increases the hemoglobin content. Because of the presence of uh, higher fiber content, it reduces the ulcers, improves the bowel movement and health of the gut. It has hepatoprotective, hypocholesteremic and hypoglycemic effects. And it is a natural remedy for dissolving painful kidney stone and averts the risk of inflammation and urinary problems. Because of presence of higher calcium, 
it alleviates joint discomfort increases the bone mineral density and prevents osteoporosis coming to the conclusions banana flower is a super food and its inclusion in our cuisine improves the nutritional needs of the rural population because of uh, because it is rich in fiber carbohydrates protein minerals and uh, it is it has a balanced essential amino acids it can be used as a nutraceutical in our daily diet thank you thank you sir i thank you ma'am presentation the presentation i request uh, the delegates to interact either they can post their query in the chat box or they can ask directly If there are no further queries i'll go thank ahead with the next thank you thank you for the giving me this opportunity yeah okay <clears throat> next presenter dr ats shamati naik ूटरल <laughs> coming to the introduction about uh, cherry tomatoes it is scientifically uh, solanum lycopersicon ceraciforme it is one of the tiny ancestral form of the present day cultivated tomatoes commonly and uh, it belongs to the family solanaceae and uh, with the chromosome number 2n equal to 24 these crops has been found to be originated in the central america but in india we can also uh, found it's being cultivated in the uh, wild forms in the uh, home gardens or in the kitchen gardens also there is a wide variability is present in this vegetable the wide variability in case of the size shape and color in case of the size the fruit shape may vary from they may be as tiny as a thumb tip and uh, to as large as a uh, golf ball and in case of the color we can see red orange golden color and uh, purple colored cherry tomatoes are also available and in case of uh, shape the shape varies between pear shape egg shape and uh, round shape fruits are also available 
and it is one of the typically day neutral vegetable crop and it's one of the highly self pollinated vegetable as these are indeterminate in growth habit these are highly cultivated under the protected cultivation system botanically the fruits are called as uh, berry and it produces perfect hermaphrodite flowers then it is having a higher uh, nutritional value and uh, so these crop are also called as high value and low volume crops they can be consumed either as a fresh or can be uh, consumed as a salad or uh, after cooking also and these are uh, having a impressive nutritious uh, edible fruits and these are perfect for making some of the processed products such as soup uh, ketchup curry paste and powders and rasam also the unripe fruits are also used uh, in the form of the pickles and uh, chutney also then coming to the nutritional value uh, it contains uh, enormous uh, vitamins and uh, phytonutrients and minerals also here we can see the vitamins vitamin a and vitamin c is uh, vitamin c is available in greater quantity nearly 28% of the requirement of our body vitamin a can be uh, fulfilled by consuming 100 gram of the cherry tomatoes and 21% of the vitamin c can be fulfilled by consuming this 100 gram of the cherry tomatoes and compared to tomatoes uh, cherry tomato is uh, having nearly 70% of the higher vitamin c uh, than the uh, tomato then coming to the nutraceutical properties uh, these are excellent source of the potassium any vegetable which is having excellent source of potassium that can uh, that helps in lowering the blood pressure and it is having high carotenoids and antioxidant activity so it helps in preventing various chronic illnesses such as neurological disorders cardiovascular diseases and asthma many uh, diseases also then some of the research reports has been reported that consuming 300 mg per ml of the extract of this cherry tomato helps in have a preventive and thera therapeutic effect against the cancerous cells and uh, the lycopene content or neurosporin present in this cherry tomatoes will inhibit the formation or spread of the tumor cells and one of the important amino acid that is gaba has uh, uh, has been used as a neurotransmitter it helps in proper functioning of the neurons in our body then uh, consuming 300 g of the cherry tomatoes per day will help in uh, preventing various cardiovascular diseases uh, hence i would like to conclude by saying that as this cherry tomato is one of the greatest wealth or greatest source of natural nutraceuticals rather than consuming the nutritional supplements we can go for consuming these cherry tomatoes in our everyday life thereby we can uh, prevent or we can uh, solve various health issues in our body and uh, it is also uh, having a sweet flavor and sweet taste and these attractive fruits are also attracts the uh, children so for whom uh, we need greater amount of the vitamins and uh, uh, vitamins that can be uh, supplemented by these vegetables so hereby i thank you all for giving my uh, giving me an uh, opportunity to uh, uh, spread the knowledge about the nutritional property of this cherry tomato with you all thank you all and all ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪಲ್ಲವಿ ಶ್ರೀಪದ್ 
डॉक्टर श्री एच पल्लवी श्री पद्मा इसी दे पल्लवी श्री पद्मा रिक्वेस्ट पल्लवी श्री पद्मा टू रेस्पॉन्ड इज नॉट प्रेजेंट so dr yam yoganand please be there so here we conclude oral presentations so next we move on to the poster presentations the duration for the poster presentation is restricted to 3 minutes so kindly stick on to the schedule because uh, subsequent lectures are there so we can't be lagging behind the schedule so i request sudhir kumar yadav sudhir kumar yadav to present his poster sudhir kumar dr sudhir kumar yadav switch on your video kindly restrict to 3 minutes yeah you are visible your screen is visible switch on your video sudhir kumar yadav so your voice is not audible dr sudhir kumar hello hello okay yeah your voice is audible sudhir kumar Keep oh okay sir presentation to join our video okay sir thank uh, th- thank you sir give me a opportunity for this uh, presentation uh, poster presentation on this uh, seminar uh, good can years uh, scholar baba saheb karinji lucknow and today i am going to presenting a poster presentation on the topic of economic prospective ethnic vegetable in human nutrition now we are going to introduction to ethnic vegetable crops have enormous potential to contribute to location specific food production because they are high, highly adaptive to current and severe environmental circumstances and the tri vegetable have a very bright future in finding a role in food and nutritional security despite abstract to connect to production and marketing so Uh, they are various examples like chikut menis uh, they are known as a multi mineral packed leafy vegetable dramestic multi purpose uh, vegetables bean bean super uh, vegetable of the uh, 20th century and uh, broad bean and other uh, so uh, sod bean uh, my objective is to pilot study tested at nutraceutical compound ethnic vegetable material method proximate analysis of the uh, moisture fat fiber protein carbohydrate energy Uh, major mineral calcium and phosphorus trace element of uh, ferrous and vitamin a vitamin c thiamine riboflavin and niacin were evaluated in selected ethnic vegetable uh, using a standard food analysis techniques uh, the uh, table number a comparative study of nutritively vegetable of ethnic vegetable we have assessed the five vegetable uh, for their uh, uh, phytochemical analysis so um, moisture is highest in a sod bean Uh, 87.2 grams protein is highest in winged bean 20.98 to 37.4 gram fat highest in winged 15.3 gram carbohydrate highest in winged bean 25.2 to 38.4 gram energy highest in chikur menis 3 310 uh, uh, kilo calorie calcium highest in uh, chikur menis 570 mg phosphorus highest in winged bean 210 to 500 mg iron highest in chikur menis 28 mg vitamin a highest in uh, 5700 mg in chikur menis internationally 
थियामिन हाइएस्ट इन ड्रमेस्टिक राइबोफ्लिन हाइएस्ट इन बींग जीरो पॉइंट वन ट्वेल्व टू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स मिलीग्राम नियासिन हाइएस्ट इन बींग वन पॉइंट सिक्स फोर टू थ्री पॉइंट फोर सेवन एंड विटामिन सी हाइएस्ट इन चिकुर मिनिस्ट टू हंड्रेड फोर सेवन एम जी रिजल्ट इन डिस्क्रिप्शन द रिजल्ट रिवील बींगड बीन इज मोर सुपीरियर इन कंटेनिंग माइजिम फॉर प्रोटीन फैट कार्बोहाइड्रेट फास्फोरस राइबोफ्लोबिन नियासिन एंड चिकुर एंड चिकुरबिन इज हाइएस्ट फॉर एनर्जी कैल्शियम फास्फोरस एंड विटामिन हाउ एर डोमेस्टिक कंट हाइएस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ थियामिन इथनिक वेजिटेबल प्रोवाइड हाई इकोनॉमिक फिजिबिलिटी इन लोकल कम्युनिटीज नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कंक्लूजन द रोल ऑफ एथनिक वेजिटेबल एलिवेट पॉवर्टी एंड माल न्यूट्रिशन इन डेवलपिंग इन वर्ल्ड थ्रो इंक्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड कंजप्शन ऑफ न्यूट्रिएस हेल्थ प्रमोटिंग इथनिक वेजिटेबल्स इथनिक वेजिटेबल आर ए मेजर सोर्स ऑफ डायट्री माइक्रोन्यूट्स एंड फाइटोकेमिकल कंपाउंड्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू फ्यूचर प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ ऑफ दिस रीजन टू रिक्वायर गवर्नमेंट सपोर्ट्स एंड इंक्रीज एलोकेशन ऑफ फंड्स टू रिलेटेड इथनिक वेजिटेबल फॉर एजुकेशन रिसर्च एंड एक्सटेंशन प्रमोट कम्युनिटी कंजर्वेशन प्रोग्राम थ्रो जियोग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन सिंस इफेस्ट न्यू नीड टू मेड फॉर द लार्ज स्केल इवेल्युएशन ऑफ जर्म प्लांट फॉर देयर न्यूट्रिएंट कंटेंट्स एंड न्यूट्रोसिटिकल प्रॉपर्टीज इनिटिव इनिशिएटिव शुड बी टेकन फॉर द पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट हैंडलिंग एंड प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ इंडिजिनियस इथनिक वेजिटेबल फॉर बेटर मार्केट पोटेंशियल प्रमोशन ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ वराइटीज विथ रिचनेस ऑफ न्यूट्रोसिटिकल ट्रेड्स थैंक यू सर thank you sudeep uh, sir any questions na uh, ask me yeah any queries from the delegates from the audience you can post it in the chat box if you want now we'll move on to the okay sir thank you sir thank you sudeep we we'll move on to the one of the oral presenter Dr. C H Pallavi Sri Padma, I request her to present. Um, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Dr. Sudhir, can you please uh, unshare your presentation poster? Dr. Sudhir. Can you stop sharing the poster? Okay, Doctor Pallavi Sri Padma. Ah, uh, hello, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible. please share your screen dr shri padma ah uh, s s sir Are you finding it difficult? Can we share it from our side? Ah, uh, yes, sir. You can share, sir. No, ma'am. That is for the crowd. Give it to open. Uh, is it visible? Ah, uh, um, yes, sir. Yeah, you can go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Sir. 
Um, good evening to all present here. Myself Pallavi, and I'm in the last semester of uh, MSc degree in specialization in post harvest technology. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm the student of Dr. B. Tanu Japriya, HR Islam Mundu. Now I would like to present uh, a topic called a turmeric, uh, which is used as a spice crop, but it can also be used as a root vegetable. Next slide, sir. Yeah, is it changing? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so turmeric is a uh, rhizomatous herbaceous perennial uh, plant which is belongs to the ginger family that is gingerberaceae and it is very uh, known for its uh, medicinal properties the chief uh, active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin which which is a natural anti uh, natural antioxidant so uh, in the society turmeric powder usage is more popular when compared to the rhizomes so now the study is to popularize the turmeric rhizome. So the, so the study was conducted on standardization and development of turmeric based vegetable curry. It was conducted at College of Horticulture Venkatramanagudam in collaboration with HR Islam Guntur. So what is the important of this study? As you all know, turmeric is a very important spice. It is used in various tablets or uh, turmeric tea, uh, etc. But when we compare to the turmeric powder, turmeric rhizomes has a lot of nutrients uh, because um, during the processing of turmeric powder, uh, because of the many uh, steps in the processing, the nutrients will be lost because of the boiling, polishing. Hence, uh, hence, we have to consider the rhizome as a consumption. So this is more concentrated on the turmeric rhizome. Mm -hmm. My topic is on standardization and development of turmeric based vegetable curry. Um, now, I uh, firstly, I conducted analysis on curcumin U values and different nutrients of 75 genotypes. Uh, different minerals are carbohydrates, fruit, fiber, uh, protein, and I conducted on those. This is the data and the bar graph illustrates the curcumin content in various turmeric genotypes. Here you can observe the genotype LTS27 has the highest curcumin when compared to the other genotypes. So that is the genotype I took for the curry preparation. Uh, the curcumin value is 5.24. And uh, I also verified with the HPLC and I analyzed and I analyzed Sanpei genotypes with HPLC, which gives a similar uh, range of curcumin. Later, I conducted many uh, nutrient analysis like proximate mineral, secondary metabolite analysis. This is a um, uh, mineral composition, nutritional composition of the LTS 27 which are used for curry. It has a highest curcumin percentage, but it also has a medium to a high uh, range of uh, remaining nutrients. Uh, this is a, a protocol to standardize the curry with various treatments. Uh, the, a, the A consists of different ingredients, blending of the paste with the ginger, coriander seeds, curry leaves, tamarind and cumin. B is a tomato, C is onion, D is turmeric. So T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 different treatments uh, with the different combinations. Like if you take uh, T5, it is a full combination of A, B and C, D. T3 is A, C, D and like that. This is a pictorial rep representation of the curry that the first step is to peel the uh, peel the turmeric rhizome and ginger later blending of different ingredients and make it uh, and making it as a paste 
and that paste should be uh, seasoned in a oil with uh, fried curry leaves with fried curry leaves after the oil separates from the curry you can have, you can uh, have the hot curry with rice or dosa this is a flow chart which i explained through a pictorial representation next slide so this is a organoleptic evolution i conducted for uh, different treatments which gives the treatment t1 treatment a1 has the uh, more um, uh, more desirable and favored for many uh, people who tasted it which has a good uh, taste color uh, mouth feel and overall acceptability this is organoleptic evolution so the conclusion is the t1 shows a maximum and wider consumer preferences than other combinations it is mainly used for the cough and sore throat this curry is most famous in vizag uh, district of andhra pradesh so this is an incredible medicinal option to boost immunity and to get instant relief from viruses so uh, not not only turmeric as a spice uh, this root vegetable of a turmeric uh, will come under ethnic group so this is treated as a ethnic vegetable which has numerous benefits thank you sir thank you pallavi for the presentation i request the audience to post their queries or I'll post it in the chat box if there are no queries i'll move on to the next poster presentation dr r nagalakshmi I request Dr. R. Nagalakshmi. Yes, ma'am. We can go ahead with the presentation. If she is not present. I request Anjali Kumari Jha to present her poster. Anjali Kumari Jha. Anjali Kumari Jha. I request you to yes, sir. present your poster. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Anjali Gumari, a student of MSc Second Year, Department, Department of Horticulture, Vegetable and Floriculture from Bihar University. My, My topic is ethnic vegetables as neutral critical shape, promising source of biopsic compounds for disease prevention and management. Introduction The vegetable from the analyzer from the on, on a large, large scale, no more extensively traded are known as ethnic vegetables. Ethnic vegetables, vegetables contribute significantly to the food security of families and serve as a means of survival during drought, famine, crops, and disease. The ethnic vegetables are not only packed with protein, essential vitamins, micronutrients. Anjali, you are uh, yes. locked in two devices, I think. So your voice is heard in echo. Can you log out from one of the device? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or else mute in uh, one device. Yes, sir. Yes. Start presenting. The ethnic vegetables are not only packed with protein, essential vitamins, micronutrients, health promoting nutrients, including antioxidants and other phytonutrients, etc. But many of these vegetables have a better nutritional value compared to major vegetables like tomato and or cabbage. Ethnic legumes like chaz bean, brattle pod, hotsa groundnut, lavla bean, bee vines, subabul, Indian lupin, horse gram, deer eye bean, stinky bean, winged bean, African yam bean, adyuki bean, bambara groundnut, and rice bean are sources of protein. 
essential amino acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, dietary fibers, essential minerals, and these ethnic vegetables and legumes are high in different phytochemicals. Ethnic vegetables have tremendous impact on the health care system and may provide medical health benefits, including the prevention and treatment of diseases and physiological disorders. Materials and methods. Ethnic vegetables are collected from different places and their different edible parts are used to study the availability of nutraceutical or bioactive compounds which are health promoting compounds. Results and discussion. Ethnic leafy vegetables like amaranth and basil are rich in protein and contain several essential amino acids such as arginine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, and tryptophan. Purslane is the richest source of linoleic acid and essential omega-3 fatty acids. The roots of sweet god contain saponin and basic acid. Yes, Anjali, can you please yam. zoom your presentation and please? Yes, sir. Zoom in. Zoom in. And then put yam. Elephant yeah, food yeah. yam okay, contains okay. cityesterol, estigmasterol, trichotin, lipiol, and cityesterol palmitate. Chenopodium album is rich in amino acids including leucine, isoleucine, lysine, and vitamin C. Roseal calices contains considerable levels of calcium, iron, niacin, and riboflavin. Secogenin, orantiamide, estigmastin, 3,6 ion, and 25 are spheros. 4 in 3,12 dion are anti inflammatory and anti allergic ingredients. Are present in Chinese not wheat. Cancerol, quercetin, cancerol, 7 O glycoside, cytosteroid, and acids have discovered in the leaves of not wheat, which have in vitro cytotoxicity, cytotoxicity, antibacterial activity, and antioxidant activity. Curry leaf has anti cancer, cardioprotective, and anti tumor properties due to its high antioxidant flavonoids and phenol content. Curry leaves are the highest source of carbazole, alkaloid extracts such as quinidine. Manibin, which have anti-cancer and antioxidant activities. The tubers of Colocasia contains anthocyanin, cyanidin, 3 glucoside, and flavonoids, which have several health benefits. In 3 tomato, 2 methyl, 1, 3, 4 oxadiazole, 2, 3 dihydro, 3, 5 dihydroxy, 6 methyl, 4 H pyrone, 4 on, and thiazole, which have anti inflammatory, antibacterial, and antifungal activities, have discovered. In water, craze, protein, beta carotene, Saponin, cholesterol, glucoside, inhydrin, and other nutrients are found in the plant. Water spinach is high in vitamins, minerals, protein, fiber, carotin, and flavonoids. I am coming to the conclusion. Ethnic vegetables have significant nutritional potentials as well as the ability to withstand unfavorable climatic circumstances as these vegetables are grow generally grow in harsh climate and even on barren land. All the ethnic vegetables have different phytonutrients and biotic compounds which plays a significant role in prevention and cure of different diseases. After all, these vegetables are comprised of all the nutritional benefits that can play a significant role in reducing the per capita consumption cap of the poor, which helps to a large extent to combat the nutrition deficiency problem. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Is it done? Yes, sir. Anjali? Okay. Request? Yes, sir. Okay. If there are any queries, please post it in the chat box. Delegates, if there are no further queries, I request the next speaker, Rajendra Prasad Kopishit. Oh, sorry, Devarai Lavakumar, kindly present your poster. Yes, sir. Devarai Lavakumar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can go ahead with your presentation. Your voice is audible. And you restrict to the allotted time, three minutes. We are lagging behind the schedule. Excuse me, sir. Is it in presentation mode, sir? Uh, it's presentation mode. Kindly zoom in. Is it okay, sir? Still, furthermore, you can scroll it down uh, as and when you need and go ahead with the presentation. Zoom in and go ahead. Uh, sir, I actually I have zoomed the poster. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, it's, it's nice. A warm welcome to one another. 
globally there are about 5000 different crops which are useful for the purpose of the consumption but most of the food supplement is done from only the 12 crops which includes the wheat rice maize and uh, which are the major contributors these crops are highly sensitive to the changing climate and weather conditions so to meet the demand of the growing population nutritionally rich low resource intensive climate resilient more adaptive underutilized local crops like ethnic vegetables with high nutrient value would be a good option to be considered as a potential crops for dietary diversification with this background information myself devrai lokma phd scholar from indian agriculture research institute new delhi presenting a poster on pestilent porcelaca oleracea and underexploited species with multi purpose benefits speaking about the crop pestilent botanically it is referred as a porcelaca oleracea belongs to the family porcelaceae and it is commonly known as pigweed or indian pigweed and uh, it is known to be yet yet most important weed crop and also known as miracle weed for its high tolerance level and uh, able to grow in able stressful condition stressful climatic conditions and it is locally popularized as gangavali kura or gangavali in telugu states coming to the botany of this flower, uh, botany of this crop it is a succulent summer annual plant that grows in a prostrate manner up to a height of 30 cm as shown in this figure 1 and This porcelain has thick taproot system, highly branched with reddish or purplish greenish stems. And the leaves are sim- simple, alternate, and clustered desertly. And this produces the yellow color flowers with multi-seeded capsules. And this plant has a special feature of C4 mechanism, which helps to survive in the heat and intensive sunlight stresses. And we will also get to wonder when we come to know about the other important benefits of this of this crop. Uh, such as it is widely distributed among different climatic conditions of the india indicating wide adoption and ease of cultivation of this crop and when we check about the nutritional profile of this crop this is consisting of all the minerals vitamins proteins compared with the other common edible vegetables it consisting of highest amount of the water next to the celery and consisting of all the uh, minerals like calcium iron magnesium phosphorus potassium sodium and zinc and among this the potassium is found in the bulk amount in this porcelain crop and it is also having bag say many vitamins like vitamin c thiamine riboflavin niacin b vitamin b6 folate and other vitamins and it is also consisting of many medicinal properties hidden in this crop such as antipyretic properties phytic dietic and anti cancer properties and it is also known that methanol extract of these leaves are also shown to have the insecticidal properties that are shown highly effective against the cotton aphids and another important aspect is that it is acts as a good bio accumulator of the cadmium lead and other heavy metals and acts as a phyto remediator and with this i like to conclude my poster by telling that porcelain and wonderful ethnic vegetable crop which is having a wider adaptability with ease of cultivation and uh, having a good nutrient profile suitable for the edible purposes and it is having good nutritional properties which is having the many pharmaceutical application and it is a plant having c4 mechanism that is able to overcome the drought mechanisms and uh, it is it is a plant that is having the pesticidal properties and having many cosmetic and the processing industry applications and finally it is also having the bioaccumulation properties which aids in the uh, process of the phyto remediation finally i thank all the organizers of the vyasa horticulture university for giving this wonderful chance thank you thank you thank you lakuma for the presentation i request the audience to interact if there are no queries you can post your query in the chat box now i request next speaker dr rajendra prasad kopi shetty dr rajendra prasad Kopi Shetty. Is not present. I request Dr. B. V. G. Prasad. BBG. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, Prasad. You can share your presentation. Is it visible, sir? Yes, it's visible. You can go ahead with your presentation. Put it, zoom it. Uh, yeah, it's visible. Is it visible, sir? Is it fine? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, very good. Very good evening to everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. B. V. G. Prasad, working as an assistant professor in the College of Horticulture, Parthipuram. 
Dr. Vaisar Hachu. Today, I am going to present nutraceutical values of ethnic green leafy vegetables in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Green leafy vegetables, as you know, the cheap and cheap sources of nutrition. This contains high amount of nutraceutical and pharmaceutical values. These are rich sources for phytonutrients, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. Particularly, minerals like potassium and ferrous very high when compared to staple food grains. These are only natural source. Leafy vegetables are the only natural source for the folic acid and low in lipid content and dietary fiber. It fits for very good for uh, weight reduction program. In, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, it is a source of diversified different leafy ethnic vegetables. This can be grown under various agroclimatic conditions by diversified socio-economic communities. Some are exploited, many are to be exploited, and many ethnic green leafy vegetables are apt to know their nutritional and pharmaceutical properties. Considering this scenario, this presentation is going to prepare the overall information about ethnic green leafy vegetables with major emphasis on the nutraceutical and pharmaceutical properties. Considering the space and time, I am just uh, I'm, I'm providing the information only the important nutritional and medicinal values. Besides this, ethnic green leafy vegetables are very good sources for diversified nutritive properties. Here we can find uh, different uh, ethnic leafy vegetables. So one is Amelandano diflora. It is called in Telugu, it is called as Ganugaku. It is very good for diabetic and rich in phytochemicals. And Alternanthera sesilis, it is called Ponaganti Kora. It is a hippoprotective. It is liver, it is, it is very good for liver, rich in folic acid. And Acheranthus aspera, it is called Uttareni. It is very, uh, very good to control, to act, uh, to prevent deworming. And Avena lantana, it is called Pindicora. It is very popular in the tribal areas. It is it is being used to control urinary systems. It is very rich in fiber content also. Next is Colocasia esculenta. This is called in Telugu, it is a chamakulu. This uh, esculenta is very good source for high root protein and moisture as well as fiber content. It is very good source to control contraptive pills. Next one is Ivomia aquatica. It is called as Thutikora. It is... Uh, a uh, very good source for potassium as well as ferrous and uh, important minerals uh, important minerals also this is a uh, very important uh, uh, leafy vegetable to control the constipation which is the major problem in the recent days next one is we can find the different amaranthus species here uh, amaranthus cardatus amaranthus cruentus and amaranthus tricolor and viridis and spinosus. This generally that amaranthus cruentus is called Cotacora, it's popularly known. But apart from that, we have different species like amaranthus cordatus, it is Koigora in Telugu. It is very popular in the state in north coastal dist districts of Andhra Pradesh, particularly in Shrikakulam, it is very popular. Amaranthus cordatus. Apart from that, here we tricolor viridis, even the spinosus, it is grown wildly, even it is having high amount of nutritive value. All these amaranthus vegetables having high glycosides, saponins, phenols, proteins, leucine, acid leucine, and lysine. And medicinal values like laxative properties, blood tonic, antipyretic, antimicrobial, and antioxidant properties. Apart from that, we can find Kumilena bangalensis. It is called Venadevi Sahadevi Kora. It is very good to control. Uh, Leprosy. It is good source. Uh, it is very good source for uh, tannins and glycosides. And next one is Cardiospermum helicobacterum. It is called Buddha Kakara. It is also good sources for iron as well as anti-diabetic, uh, diabetic and anti and diuretic properties also. Next one is here you can find uh, Bacillus species, Bacillus rubra, where the stem is red. Even you can find Bacillus alba also, this white color species, where the stem is white color. Here that rubra, it is having high vitamin C and folates, as well as it is having the medicinal value like anti-diabetic properties. Next, Bohivia diffuser, it is called Punarva Aku. It is high amount of alkaloids and beta sterols. It is anti-noniceptive, means it can able to uh, resist the body in terms of other organisms or other uh, small functions. In fluctuations from the body. It is very good source to improve your immunity. Next one is Silosia argentina. It is generally known as a weed, but even it is having a good amount of leaves, have good amount of nutrition, acetic acid, tartaric acid, malic acid, and other alpha beta gamma components. Uh, here you can find other uh, uh, Kinopodium album as well as uh, say, Silom gigantia, it is called Gadabak Taku. And here, Asaurapus androgynous, it is called multivitamin vegetable, vitamin lacora. In Xanthium, also, we can find. And here, the Trumex, uh, which is uh, very popular uh, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, it is high in uh, vitamin C and oxalic acid. Hi, so even it is high in tocopherol content, also. Hi, Apart from tamarindus, it is rich in high uh, vitamin C and tartaric acid. Even that here in Canthium Dipokum, it is called Balsaku. It is Telugu. In Telugu, it is a popular proverb. It is called Badikunte Balsak Tin Badke Vachu. 
So similarly, these uh, proverbs are very popular. Here, this calcium dicocum is very good for body cooling. Apart from that, we have uh, chinchilaco. It is very good for cancer, to control cancer, and gongora, hibiscus cannabinus, to sir, control cholesterol. No, you have taken sir, give me one minute, sir. One minute, sir. I am going to conclude. And we have Pochlaka species and Pochlaka walrasia, Pochlaka pylos, and Pochlaka quadrifolia. These are all uh, very good sources of uh, omega 3 fatty acids, galatinins, camphorol. And even the, these are having the medicinal properties like anti inflammatory, hypoglycemic, and anti ulcer properties. Considering this, uh, uh, since our state is blessed with various uh, diversified ethic green leafy vegetables. Further research has to be conducted to exploit the nutritive and pharmaceutical values of these uh, ethnic green leafy vegetables. For this, identification, collection, conservation, and communization is very necessary. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Prasad. Our next speaker, Chetty Bindu. Chetty Bindu. Stop sharing uh, your presentation, Prasad. And no, request. Sir, sure, sir. Sure. Give me a minute. Shetty Bindu. Bindu. You can zoom the presentation. Yes. You can go ahead with the presentation. The voice is not audible. Bindu, your voice is not audible. The voice is not. So that seems to be a technical glitch. So can 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 I come back to you again? Bindu. I request next speaker. We'll come back to you, Bindu. I request next speaker, Sudhir Kumar Reddy. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can go ahead with the presentation. If you want, you can come down here in the present. Okay, sir. Okay, Sudhir, you can go ahead with the presentation. Thank you. 
ఇంత పైక అంట టైటిల్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ టు ఎవరి వన్ మై సెల్ఫ్ సుధీర్ కుమార్ రెడ్డి డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ వెజిటేబుల్ సైన్స్ డాక్టర్ వైఎస్ఆర్ హెచ్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ హార్టికల్చర్ అనంతరాజపేట టుడే ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు ప్రెసెంట్ అబౌట్ సోర్స్ ఫర్ బ్రీడింగ్ అండ్ న్యూట్రిషనల్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ ఆఫ్ అండర్ ఎక్స్పైటెడ్ ఎథనిక్ కుక్రబిటీషియస్ వెజిటేబుల్ క్రాప్స్ ఇన్ కుక్రబిట్ క్రాప్ దెర్ ఆర్ థౌజండ్ స్పీసీస్ ఆర్ దెర్ ఇన్ దట్ థౌజండ్ స్పీసీస్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ కల్టివేట్ కమర్షియలీ ఓన్లీ టెన్ స్పీసీస్ థర్టీ త్రీ స్పీసీస్ ఓన్లీ ఇన్ దట్ వన్ ఇన్ దట్ వన్ టెన్ ఈజ్ మేజర్ అండ్ ట్వంటీ టూ ట్వెల్వ్ ఈజ్ మైనర్ క్రాప్ అదర్ దెన్ దీస్ థర్టీ త్రీ క్రాప్స్ వీఆర్ అనదర్ త్రీ మేజర్ స్పీసీస్ ఇస్ దెర్ దీస్ త్రీ స్పీసీస్ ఆర్ అండర్ ఎక్స్ప్లాటెడ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో కమర్షియల్ కల్టివేషన్ బై ద ఫార్మర్స్ అండ్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ బ్రీడింగ్ అవేర్నెస్ ఇన్ బ్రీడర్స్ that is the problem so that's why you are called as under exploited these three crops why farmers is not uh, going for uh, these three crops there are three problems is there first an unavailability of planting materials that is the one uh, one of the problem and another one uh, unawareness of nutritional properties so there uh, they don't uh, they don't know what are the minerals what are the nutrition uh, nutrition is there in under exploited vegetable crops that is the uh, one problem another one uh, how to develop the uh, abiotic uh, stress varieties and how to uh, develop the inter specific hybridization how to involve in inter specific hybridization they don't know that is that's why you call as a uh, under exploited crops in that one we can give the uh, awareness about the nut- uh, nutritional properties of these three crops one is a cyclanthrida pedata this is called as uh, sweet bitter melon in this one uh, maximum amount of carbohydrate proteins and uh, fat Uh, these are the main uh, nutrition uh, nutraceuticals uh, is present in cyclanthrida predata and uh, another medicinal properties are also is there uh, decreasing the effect of tumor uh, uh, cancer and another one is uh, lowering the blood cholesterol these are the medicinal properties of cyclanthrida predata and another one memotica symbolaria this is the uh, uh, we call uh, we called as in telugu kasarakaya this is the mainly used for uh, diabetic uh, diabetic patient Uh, in this one uh, there is no uh, so much uh, nutraceuticals is present in the memotica symbol area uh, the final conclusion of uh, this poster is uh, uh, that no knowledge of uh, uh, nut- nutrition that's why uh, we can give the uh, nut- uh, nutrition properties of these three underutilized crops and we can go for development of abiotic stress varieties and uh, as well as we can uh, involve as uh, hybridization program these three crops ఆడిబుల్ సార్ Is it audible, sir? Yes, it's audible. Myself, Vaishnavi from the Department of Vegetable Science, College of Horticulture, Anantar Ajupeta. I am here to present my poster on role of vegetable pigments in human health. Coming to introduction, pigments are any chemical compound that absorbs the light of specific wavelength in the visible spectrum. These pigments are responsible for various colors of fruits, vegetables and them. Um, leaves these pigments also plays an important role in physiological processes called photosynthesis growth and development how these pigments are having different colors means different colors of pigments are due to the 
molecule specific compound called chromophore the mode of photo excitation of electrons in the chromophore are responsible for different colors in the pigments for example the leaf uh, leaf pigment that is chlorophyll absorbs the specific wavelength of red and blue and emits wavelength of green color that's why the leaves are green in color the major plant pigment classes are four in number that is chlorophyll carotenoids flavonoids and betalins in plants chlorophyll plays an important role in photosynthesis whereas carotenoids flavonoids and betalins acts as light harvesting complex and protects the photosynthetic machinery from photo oxidation in in humans later three pigments called carotenoids flavonoids and betalins plays an important role as nutraceuticals in human body by eating the mix of different colored vegetables we can expect different health benefits for example red color benefits red color fruit of vegetables helps fight cancer and reduces the risk of diabetes eating vegetables which are green in color boosts the immune system whereas vegetables rich in carotenoids boosts the immune function and reduces the risk of heart diseases vegetables rich in anthocyanin fight cancer and unwanted inflammation whereas vegetables rich in flavonoids protect against cancer here table 1 represents pigment content present in various vegetables chlorophyll content is maximum in curry leaves coriander spinach whereas lycopene is highest in tomato beta carotene is highest in drumstick leaves agathe leaves and fenugreek zeaxanthin is highest in basil leaf flavones are highest in celery and parsley anthocyanin content is highest in rhubarb coming to the role of plant pigments in human health they act as pro vitamin a the example for this is alpha carotene and beta carotene some of the pigments acts as antioxidants which scavenges the free radicals in the human body that's why they protect them from various diseases the chemical uh, the um, pigments like alpha carotene beta carotene accumulates in the skins of humans and protect them from the harmful radiations from the sun rays and protect against sun, skin cancers and sunburn some of the pigments because of their antioxidant activity acts as anti cancerous agents the anti oxidant and anti inflammatory properties of the various pigments like carotenoids prevent the prevents the cardiovascular diseases various neurodegenerative diseases like cognitive decline and alzheimer's disease can be easily controlled by consuming the vegetables rich in carotenoids the um, pigment like beta cryptoxanthin helps in reduction of type 2 diabetes in humans various pigments like uh, anthocyanins are having new neuroprotective effect and antimicrobial effect against various types of microorganisms the neuroprotective effect of um, various pigments protects the nerves from photo oxidation and um, neurotoxicity finally the vegetables are rich source of all plant pigment profiles that is chlorophyll carotenoids flavonoids and betalins which helps in controlling many diseases in humans so it is necessary to add more vegetables in our daily diet isolation and utilization of natural pigments from these vegetables also prevents various side effects produced which are usually observed by using artificial coloring agents the vegetables like lettuce coleus ams moringa winged bean broccoli basilla and rhubarb are good sources of natural pigments hence i conclude my sem post thank you vaishnavi now i request uh, shrivastava kubey shrivastava kubey to share your presentation post it Good evening, sir. Good evening to all. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible. Good evening to all. Myself, Shivat Kubey from Vegetable Science Department of this college. Uh, today, I am going to give my poster uh, presentation on the topic of uh, the hidden row of underexploited uh, vegetable, uh, leafy vegetable in tropical region. Uh, coming to the introduction, India is the home to the large uh, number of the leafy vegetable, which are blessed with the enormous uh, potential with the vitamins and minerals. And uh, uh, vegetables play a vital role in the food and uh, nutritional sec security. And especially, and the green leafy vegetable are the blessed with the tremendous uh, nut nutritional and medicinal properties. Uh, properties. 
and uh, com uh, coming to the its uh, imp uh, importance uh, these uh, leafy vegetables are a rich source of uh, minerals like iron zinc calcium potassium magnesium phosphorus and uh, vitamins like uh, c k and uh, vitamin a and uh, some uh, amino acids also and uh, phytopigments like uh, carotene uh, lutein and uh, zeaxanthin and dietary fibers also uh, the potassium content of the leafy vegetable is good for control of the dietary and uh, hypertensive uh, uh, complications uh, they play a, a key role in the human uh, health management uh, particularly uh, lowering the risk of the chronic uh, human elements such as cancerous cardiovascular diseases and some uh, disorders coming to the reason for the under utilization the main uh, first point is uh, many of these uh, leafy vegetables are found recent and uh, adaptive and tolerant to adverse climatic conditions which are uh, very uh, climatic conditions uh, they can be raised at a lower management cost and even uh, even on a poor uh, marginal lands also underutilized of these leafy vegetables particularly in the uh, constant of eastern india is due to the complex reasons like geographical location and social and economical concern also and uh, coming to the, these are some of the example for the uh, underutilized leafy vegetables basella it uh, it uh, it, uh, it is helps in a remedy for the uh, burns and uh, sunscar uh, of this uh, skin diseases coming to the fenugreek we all uh, we all know that uh, it prevents constipation and stomach problems and control in the uh, cholesterol also and uh, it is having rich in antioxidant and coming to the gongura we can we can call it as uh, uh, pundi in kannada uh, and uh, it it is rich uh, rich source of uh, iron and anti inflammatory and uh, it reduces the body temperature and coming to the uh, rajgiri that is uh, uh, amaranthus one of the uh, amaranthus species uh, in rajgiri it is a kannada word uh it it is uh, rich in uh, vitamin vitamins and uh, macro uh, micro uh, nutrients like uh, calcium magnesium iron etc next coming to the uh, pon uh, ponagati leaves which is uh, uh, which is helps to reduce the uh, skin disease and which helps to grow the uh, skin glow and rich source of uh, minerals and nutrition and these are the some of the example for uh, dill green like sorrel atlanthera moringa uh, moringa which is uh, uh, multivitamin we can call it as a multivitamin uh, uh, tree coming to the uh, limitations the main causes of this the pure utilization of these plants are the shortage of the planting material and lack of knowledge about their uh, nutritional and medicinal properties and especially in uh, urban areas because uh, in a rural areas uh, we Uh, this type of uh, underutilized uh, leafy vegetable uh, farmers already know that uh, and next uh, lack of knowledge about the production and method of these crops and uh, uh, too little uh, institutional uh, interest for these plants are a differential uh, uh, di uh, different issue for the low production and standards of these vegetables and lastly uh, conclusion that under uh, uh, utilized leafy vegetables are highly uh, climatic resilient Uh, really excellent and uh, one of the uh, cheapest vegetable available in the market thus uh, it could be uh, rightly described as the climate uh, climate smart as well as a nutritional smart crop to be uh, popularized globally and high nutritional qualities and uh, indicate that the cultivation and the consumption of these crops may be helpful in the overcoming the nutritional deficiencies because nowadays we are facing the uh, 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 hidden hidden hunger uh, that we can overcome by these uh, consuming uh, that uh, uh, these uh, leafy vegetables and uh, predominant in many rural areas of this country and helpful to boost the socio and uh, economic condition of the social as well thank you sir thank you so much now i request uh, we aishwarya we aishwarya to share a poster yes sir If there are any queries please post it in the chat box Aishwarya yes, you can stop sharing yes, Kubel 
श्रीवास्तव कुबे ओके I request Aishwarya. Sir, is it visible, sir? No, Aishwarya. Share your presentation to our poster. Sir, one minute, sir. Yeah, it's visible now. Okay, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, bit louder. Yeah, you are audible. Okay, sir. Good evening to all dignitaries present here. I am B. Aishwarya from the Vegetable Science Department uh, from the College of Horticulture, Anandraj Peta. Uh, today, my topic uh, on poster presentation is Winged Bee, a high protein crop of the tropics. Uh, First, coming to the introduction, uh, as you as you all know that uh, its scientific name is Sopocopus uh, tetragonalopus with chromosome number twenty eight and its family uh, Fabaceae. It is also known as four angled bean, uh, goa bean, or manila bean, or princess bean, etc. Compared to all other underexploited vegetable crops, why you, why we have to choose these crops means there are uh, uh, some other reasons. Uh, first one is. Uh, e in this crop, all all whole plant is edible, like leaves, pots, tubers, etc. Whole plant is edible compared to all other plants. And uh, another reason is it can grow uh, can grow more effectively with little care and man management uh, compared to other crops. It is an underutilized, non-conventional, and multi-purpose tropical leguminous plant, and it is native to New Guinea. Uh, here, some of the uh, protein content in different beans, like uh, uh, when you compare the winged bean to different beans, like soya bean, sword bean, and mung bean, jag bean, uh, winged bean contains more protein content in tubers and seeds. Uh, next, next coming to importance, uh, here pots, tubers, seeds, leaves, flowers are uh, rich in proteins, uh, vitamins, and minerals, and it also causes remarkable soil nitrification properties. And protein content varies in leaves and pots. Uh, here, uh, pots and uh, leaves leaves contain more amount of protein. And winged bean uh, have high an, an antioxidant activity compared to uh, all other beans. It also contains anti-nutritional factors like uh, trypsin inhibitors, chymotrypsin inhibitors, saponins, tannins, etc. It is uh, one of the major defects in this winged bean. Next, uh, some of the benefits are uh, uh, rich in vitamins and minerals and prevents premature skin aging, uh, supports immunity, uh, prevents uh, birth defects, healthy teeth and nails can maintain, and it is rich in iron, so it can protect from anemia. It can prevent DNA damage also. Uh, majorly, uh, uh, whole plant is use, uh, usable, so uh, if Specifically, leaves, flowers, pots, seeds, and tuberous roots have a different amount of protein and nutrient rich. Next, coming to the uh, overall conclusion of this crop, here uh, it, it, it can be grown alternative to soya beans uh, towards meeting its uh, global food and nutrition security. Uh, it, it can be considered as a important underutilized legume crop. Uh, it has the winged bean has the major potential to resolve the global food and nutritional security problems in the future because of its multiple uh, nutritional potential and multiple uses. It also contains uh, major, majorly, uh, we depict that uh, it contains major amount of protein compared to all other uh, bean, bean crops. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Aishwarya, for the present for the poster. Now I request uh, Namrata Chandrakam Hegde to present her post.
Good evening and a warm welcome to each and everyone present here. I am Namrita from Vegetable Science Department, College of Horticulture, Bengaluru. I am here to give a poster presentation on the topic Bird's Eye Chili, a potential ethnopharmacological vegetable. Uh, capsicum frutescence, which is a, a scientific name of Bird's Eye Chili, which belongs to the family Solanaceae, having a diploid chromosome number uh, 24. It is a small upright growing, uh, which is available in different colors like red, yellow, uh, green, uh, dark blue and uh, purple color. And uh, coming to the uh, nutritional aspects, um, the capsaicin, which is responsible for the pungency, that is significantly high in capsicum fruit essence. Uh, so that has the great health benefits and uh, tremendous effect on the health. So the capsaicin, which is significantly high in capsicum fruit essence, that helps to cure arthritis, dyspepsia, toothache, and rheumatism. Uh, it increases the movement of the uh, food and it, it helps to uh, produce the enzymes, which is responsible for the uh, digestion. So by that, it helps to uh, digest the, uh, like increases the body met metabolism. Uh, the saponin and the tannins, which is the phytochemicals, that is also significantly high in capsicum fruit essence, uh, that helps to reduce the fungal infection and the different kinds of allergies. And uh, the, it helps to reduce the bad cholesterol, uh, blood sugar, and the blood pressure. And it helps to detoxify the whole body system. And uh, one report saying that the 600 consumption of 600 milligram of capsaicin, which is the uh, which is the capsicum fruit essence powder, that helps to reduce the uh, like uh, uh, gastric ulcer, uh, like any problem which is uh, produced inside the uh, gas gastric or uh, 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 mucosal injuries and uh, uh, like uh, ulcer development, which have which happens in inside the gut, that acts as the buffer to the gut. And uh, one more report saying that a uh, consumption of the 5 milligram of capsaicin, uh, a capsicum fruit essence, it, which includes 26.6 uh, milligram of uh, uh, capsaicin content, that helps to reduce the uh, bl uh, plasma glucose level and uh, it, it maintains the insulin level by the, this, it can help to manage the uh, type 2 diabetes. And uh, coming to the uh, uses of the main capsaicin, which is significantly high in, uh, we observed in uh, uh, capsicum fruit essence. Uh, that is also helps in uh, like producing uh, uh, manufacturing of lipstick and, and many other uh, cosmetic uh, industries. So by this, I would like to conclude that the consumption of uh, capsicum fruit essence rather than the chili, which will give a tremendous health benefits and uh, it have the great uh, health benefits also. Thank you. Thank you. Now I request uh, Shetty Bindu to share a poster. Bindu, your voice is not audible. Unmute yourself. Bindu, unmute. Your voice is not audible. Your voice is not audible. Not audible. Log out and try to log in again. It's a lost call for oral as well as poster presentation candidates, participants. M. Yogananda is due for oral presentation. Is he around? M. Yogananda. M. Yogananda. It's not there. From poster presentations, R. Nagalakshmi. R. Nagalakshmi. You are due for poster presentation. 
and Rajendra Prasad Kopi Shetty. Rajendra Prasad Kopi Shetty. Bindu, were you able to communicate? Unmute? Are you there? Bindu, you can share your poster. Increase the speaker volume. There seems to be a technical glitch. Your voice is not audible. Try to connect to the headphones, earphones. Bindu, we'll try to present from here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, Bindu, we will present from our side. You can connect it from your mobile. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah you are audible. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah start. Okay. A good evening to all of you. Myself, Chetty Bindu, working as scientist horticulture at Horticulture Research Station, Chintapalli. Today, I'm going to uh, poster present the ethnic vegetables consumed by tribals of Allur Sitaram Raju district, Andhra Pradesh. As you all know that after the bifurcation, the district Allur Sitaram Raju district has been formed and it is uh, comprises completely of the Eastern Ghats where the different uh, tribal communities live with unique relationship with the land and the forest. And they also grow agriculture for household needs and they supplement the fruits and wild vegetables which are found in the forest, both cultivated and also collected. So this uh, shows that the wild ethnic vegetables are of great importance to the uh, people of uh, tribal areas. So there are hundreds of uncultivated vegetables in this region and different Adivasi tribes uh, use different ways, uh, either as raw or as cooked form. And most of the foods are uh, categorized to fruits, vegetables and uh, roots and tubers. And they have a great importance and significance 
um, significance during the celebration of community festivals where they harvest together these uh, you, I, wild ethnic vegetables and uh, eat together and several botanists from botanical departments tried to characterize and document these wild species and we can also uh, coming to the nutritional profile of these uh, tribal uh, tribal ethnic vegetables they have a tremendous knowledge in terms of utilization of these uh, parts like uh, for example if we take the colchicea esculenta where the tubers are commonly used here they use the petiole and leaves for their consumption and we can see that the nutritional data perfectly meets with the choice of the foods. And we can see that the traditional vegetables are found year round so that it helps in nutrition in case of uh, these people. And we can see that most of the foods that are present, uh, wild ethnic uh, vegetables that are found here are rich in vitamin C, calcium, iron, micronutrients, and are also rich in uh, carotene. And uh, we can also see they are full of fiber, which helps in the anti-cancerous and constipation properties and they are of great significance in present days due to their presence in their wild uh, in their diabetic diets and we can also see the table which shows the different values of the fiber and other mineral nutrients in case of these wild vegetables we can see for example if you see the jackfruit where we eat ripened fruit but they use it as a raw or as well as the seeds are used for vegetable purposes and also we can see some species is rarely used that is the bauhinia purpurea and bauhinia wahi where the seeds are used as a snack and also the tender shoots are used uh, used as a vegetable and also used in dehydrated forms also and we can also see some uh, ferns like uh, diplasium esculentum uh, where the folded leaves the tender leaves are used as a vegetable and the, they not only provide them with nutrition but also fights against the diseases so in general, I conclude that the tribals, they are very rich in traditional knowledge coming to wild ethnic vegetables due to their long-term association with the forest. The wild consumption and the availability of wild plants attest their value and also are especially visible among this indigenous culture. And this habit of using these wild edible plants and underutilized vegetables is still alive in tribal culture and is the main source of nutrition for them. So coming uh, to the future line of work, more research must be done on the potential wild culti uh, and uncultivated special vegetables where millions of tribal people are present in India, approximately 10.5 crores crore tribal population are present in India at present and they should be documented and also they have the considerable knowledge so they have to be scientifically valid validated and it is also important to record preserve and infuse this knowledge to the future upcoming generations uh, for our human uh, human and nutrition and to combat the malnutrition in india so thank you for giving me this opportunity thank you bindu for the poster and uh, are there any queries? There are no queries. So we conclude the session here. And I request the chairman of the session, Dr. P. Sudhakar, sir, Dean of Agriculture, Acharya Indiranga Agriculture University, Guntur, request to kindly give remarks. Concluding remarks, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Siv Prasad. Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate the, the whole team, uh, the co-chairman, Professor Swarajya Lakshmi, and the moderator, Professor Siv Prasad, reporters, Dr. P. Srilata and uh, Srimati Asma. Uh, you have done a good job because lack of time, really, uh, you did a great job uh, for constraining the time and other things. And similarly, uh, from the beginning of the talks, as well as the poster presentations, everybody has given uh, uh, really the new information related to this theme. Uh, especially I congratulate the students, especially who has presented boldly uh, about these ethnic vegetables. And uh, definitely this is going to be uh, totally, I congratulate the, all the organizing uh, committee for selecting this topic especially. This is the uh, need of the day and also the exactly the time of the day also. Uh, now this is the time to take more research. Uh, now uh, most of the speakers have shown the uh, various kinds of uh, vegetables or leafy vegetables, but it's now the researchers have to take this 
and take this forward uh, further. Uh, how this can be, this chemical or part of the plants can be explored in this uh, pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. Uh, I think this now the job is with the researchers. Now, thank you one and all uh, for, uh, first of all, uh, enlighten me uh, because I'm a completely an out of the box. Uh, I'm only concerned with my agricultural crops. Now, this is really has given me many thoughts also to take forward uh, these ideas also for me. And thank you one and all. Thank you very much. It was an extreme pleasure, sir. Uh, you are being with us for the entire session, patiently hearing and throwing the light upon it and being our guide mentor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being the chairman, sir. Thank okay, you, sir. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, request, uh, Congratulations, ma'am, uh, to give our concluding remarks. Yes, sir, it, uh, it is uh, really a very good uh, session, both the oral and uh, poster presentation uh, by students and the staff, uh, those who, who are closely associated with the crop, vegetable crops and uh, wild uh, uh, species. And uh, we have really enriched with the knowledge about different crops, the uh, way of uh, prepare, preparation of their slides and uh, posters. It's really very excellent uh, and information on uh, different crops and traditional uh, crops where uh, the, the tribal people who are uh, uh, associated with the, these uh, crops. Really, they are the major source uh, nowadays uh, for the uh, real value of these uh, crops. And it is time to focus on uh, these crops and to exploit their uh, utility and their, their uh, in, uh, preparation of different uh, uh, food items as well as uh, pharmaceutical uh, products preparation. Uh, now, uh, the, this is the uh, time to focus uh, on the research, PG research or uh, PhD research from the academics uh, uh, institutions. And, uh, Thank you, sir, for uh, being with us in this session. And I thank all participants and I congratulate and appreciate all participants for their active uh, involvement in the, in the session. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your concluding remarks. Now, I would like to thank each and everyone who have been a part of this uh, session two, uh, that is, uh, based on the theme, ethnic vegetables as nutraceuticals. Um, I would like to thank uh, the chairman of this uh, session, Dr. P. Sudhakar, sir, Dean of Agriculture, Acharya Engineering Agriculture University, Kultur, the co-chairman, Dr. K. Suraj Lakshmi, ma'am, professor, uh, Department of post Harvest Technology, uh, for patient hearing. And I would also uh, like to thank uh, Dr. V. V. Padmaja, Associate Professor, so for uh, having uh, been with us as part of the jury. And I would like to extend my uh, gratitude towards uh, Dr. P. Srilath Aston Professor, uh, Srimati Asma Siddiqui Aston Professor, uh, College of Horticulture, Anantaraj Peta, uh, for being the rapporteurs. And uh, not, but not, uh, last but not, the, not least, but not the last, I would like to thank uh, each and every student, uh, each and every participant, especially the lead speaker, uh, Dr. Usha Kumari, ma'am, and uh, the oral, oral presentation speakers, and all the poster presentation students. So, for their enriched presentations uh, for delivering into this ethnic vegetables as nutraceuticals. I thank each and everyone. I thank. Next session starts at 9 30. Yeah, we are ready. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, good evening.
Good evening, Sri Ram sir. Good evening, Sri Das sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Asma, Asma.
Hello, sir. Start. Sir, shall we start? Yeah, yeah, you please. Yes, yes. Let's read up. Yeah. We are ready, madam. You can start. A very good evening, all of you. I am Dr. G. Tanuja Shivaram, working as Associate Professor in Department of Horticulture at College of Horticulture, Anandaraj Peta. And uh, I welcome all of you for the session. That is the fourth session for this uh, conference on ethnic vegetables. And this session uh, deals with the pest and disease management. Okay. Now I welcome the chairman of the technical session, that is Dr. S. S. Srira, Principal Scientist, Addition of Crop Protection, IAHR Bangalore. I welcome you, sir, for this session. And co-chairman of this session, Dr. V. Sridhar, sir, Principal Scientist, Division of Plant Crop Protection at IAHR Bangalore. And I welcome all the other participants for the oral session as well as the post session. And I also welcome all the lead speakers of this session. The main objective of this session, we are going to deal with to identify among the uh, prevalent pests and diseases and also to conduct uh, pest and disease surveillance and also to develop an integrated pest management strategies and also to promote any cultural as well as biological control mother, methods against these plant protection measures. So we, before starting the session, I would like to give a brief um, introduction about the Dr. S. Sriram sir. Dr. S. Sriram, he is working as a principal scientist at Division of Plant Pathology at IHR Bangalore. Earlier, he worked at CTCRI Trivandrum, and then he, he was moved to Guaneshwar. And then later on, he was working in ICAR NBAR at Bangalore. And now, at present, he is working as plant, plant pathologist at Division of Crop Protection at IHR Bangalore. And he is the chief editor for Journal of Horticulture Science. And still he is continuing the same course. And he is also continuing as associate editor, waste management in horticulture ecosystem. And he was also hold the post of associate editor for the Journal of Biological Control. And he has already having the pattern of invert emulsion formulation of a fungal and agonistic for biological management of first disease in. And he is also recipient of many awards. To few among them is uh, Dr. B.S. Guanamma Team Research Award and uh, NRDC Meritorious Invention Award for the year 2015. Mm -hmm. And he has also credited with the S. Sidam, Sidanandam Award for the Biocontrol bio Research Work. And he is a fellow of Indian Phytopathological Society and Society for Biocontrol Advancement for Bank at Bangalore. And this area of interest where he is concentrating his research on biological control, disease resistance, and fungicide resistance. And to his credit, he has been contributed 133 research papers and four twelve book chapters. And he has uh, attended and presented many 44 seminars and symposia. And to give a brief about the co-chairman, Dr. V. Sridhar, and he is currently working as a principal scientist in Division of Entomology at IHR Bangalore. And his area of specialization is integrated pest management and insecticide resistant management and climate change and insects in horticulture crops. He had about 105 research publications, 15 book chapters, and 15 popular articles, and two books as editor. He has on a patent for light cum suction trap for insects. And he visited more than 15, 13 countries. And he has uh, attempted international trainings on allele mining and climax. And he has organized many conferences, meetings, seminars, and related to advancement of pest management in horticulture ecosystem. And he is the recipient of many awards like Professor Kameshwar Rao Award for the best oral presentation. And he is an awardee of Eminent Scientist Award and uh, Professor B.A. David Outstanding Scientist Award for the Horticulture Science in the year 2022. And he has awarded with the 10 Best Purple Awards. And he is the fellow of Royal Entomological Society 
and Association for Advancement of Pest Management in Horticultural Ecosystem and Society for Biological Control Advancement and Applied Geologists Research Association. And he is a life member of eight professional scientific societies. And he is also a recipient of Sir Fostek Fellowship for Young Scientists Award for the year 2004. And so I welcome the chairman and co-chairman for this session. And now we'll start the technical session. And here we have the uh, committee for the session as I am the moderator and rapporteurs are Dr. Arunodayam, Associate Assistant Professor at Department of Pathology and Dr. A. Nishchala. She is also Assistant Professor at the Department of Entomology and Dr. Dinesh, he is assistant professor at Department of Pathology. And I welcome all the members. And now, we'll, shall we start, sir? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Just um, before starting, I first uh, thank the OSR University for recognizing us uh, uh, to be part of this uh, program. And I thank uh, specifically Dr. Gopal uh, for uh, inviting us for this um, program. Uh, and uh, the ethnic vegetables are very important. We are giving importance for the other vegetables, but uh, traditional and ethnic vegetables are also important. Uh, with, uh, we have listened in the previous session many uh, points about the ethnic vegetables. But as a plant production scientist, we have to see the uh, pest and management. And um, generally, if you see these are underutilized the crops and generally farmers may not be doing uh, much of the plant production measures. But I hope this particular session will bring out some management aspects for the uh, management of pestilent disease in the underutilized uh, vegetable crops. I am very happy to be with my best friend and colleague, Dr. Sridhar, who is joining with me in this uh, session. And, uh, and I wish to thank all. And I saw the list and I'm happy to see that many of the presentations are having the uh, biocontrolled importance. Now I request Dr. Sridhar to share his remarks. After his remarks, we will start the session. Thank you, Dr. Sir, Sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Sridham. As I told, I'm also thankful to the organizers for inviting us to be a part of this. Uh, when when it uh, invitation has come, I was in dilemma where we have to start with this uh, ethnic crops. Where, where, where is the demarcation? Uh, after uh, listening since morning, uh, since inauguration, I have changed a little bit in the uh, PPT also. With the total presentation, so let us hope that we'll have a clear cut idea about what are the major uh, major insect mite uh, or other diseases uh, in this group so that we can come out with some recommendations as in the morning inaugural session, Uncle Vice Chancellor was telling to come out with some of the recommendations which may help to start some of the projects at national level also, uh, or collaborative uh, from uh, in, ICR institutes or SAEs or SAEs and uh, 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 other institutes. In that respect, uh, I thank the organizers and uh, uh, with uh, if you say okay, I will uh, go ahead with my presentation. Sir, you are the first presenter, sir, in the lead presentation. Yeah, yeah. Sir, just, sir, yeah. just I want to share now the time is uh, almost six. Uh, yeah. Uh, shall we have uh, two lead presentations uh, today because uh, up to 6.30 they have given time. After okay. that, there is some cultural program. Then there are 12 oral presentations and yeah. uh, 12 or some posters are also there. How to go about, sir, two lead presentations we will take today. Yeah, yeah, that will present. Uh, see, sir, Dr. Tanuja, what is your time like 6 30 or you can extend anything? We'll decide now itself. Sir, sir now it is 6. 6. Yes, sir. We can start and uh, two or three presentation, oral presentation, we can continue, sir. Can up to what time yeah. we have? Uh, we'll uh, continue up to 6 45, shall we? Oh. Okay, in that case, uh, uh, means how much time I can take? 15 minutes? 15 minutes, sir. Okay, uh, I'll go a little fast. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, right, right. Next, Ruth Madam is ready, ready now? Yes, Dr. sir. Ruth sir. Madam, okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Then, okay. okay. Sir, please, sir. Yeah, okay, okay, okay.
Yeah, is it visible, that's Sir, yes, sir, it is visible, sir. Yeah, very uh, respected uh, that Sri Ram uh, and the group from <coughs> the organizer side that Tanuja, Dr. Nichel, Dr. Arunath, Hayan, Dr. Dinesh and, uh, and, uh, and all the organizers. Thanks uh, for giving this opportunity of sharing. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I will be learning something uh, uh, regarding this ethnic uh, vegetables and what are the best problems. In that way, I try to compile some of the problems in ethnic vegetables Keeping in view, ethnic vegetables definition is going in different ways, but here I will try to uh, restrict to the vegetables which are of Indian origin, uh, but I have gone to the other non-ethnic also one or two which are most prevalently uh, grown in our uh, Indian conditions and uh, one or two pests which are becoming major problem in the recent past. So that if one or two are interested in that, our students, if somebody is interested to know, they can uh, go about that. Uh, coming to the just, uh, just a minute. It's not going very fast. Sir, the previous session also, if it is not in the slide mode, it is moving, I think. Achha, that way. I saw the previous session. Uh -huh. It was not in the slide mode. Then it was going. Then uh, I'll go come out. I'll share again. It is actually directly going into the slide mode only. Okay, <laughs> this uh, coming to the uh, um, common crops, I will be focusing is uh, uh, brinjal, cooker bits. Uh, whether it is a, it is a common problem, whatever it is a major problem, whatever you could uh, identify is fruit flies should be the problem. Whether it is a bitter guard, snake guard, pumpkin, cucumber, ivy guard, or uh, whatever may be the different guards. Uh, coming to the uh, leafy vegetables, amaranthus is uh, uh, number one, curry leaf is being used, moringa is another uh, 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 crop which is having an export potential uh, and uh, in Andhra, gungara is uh, without mentioning that should be included, that, that is one and uh, uh, other crops are colocasia, cluster beans, tamarind and okra and this for NRIs, whatever is grown in India, they are thirsty uh, because they have eight different vegetables here. Whatever is grown in India, they would be liking. For NRIs, all the vegetables grown in India, uh, they will they will consider it as uh, ethnic crops only. Then coming to the major uh, groups of pest in these uh, uh, ethnic vegetables, we can divide them into the leaf-eating caterpillars or webbers, particularly in uh, uh, leaf vegetables like uh, amaranthus, this webbers are problem, not only here, Moringa also, uh, that is a major problem. Sucking pest will be a crop uh, like uh, thrips, mites, white flies, aphids, mealybugs, they are a uh, uh, common problem in different crops. Borers, suppose in case of the uh, brinjal, if you take shoot borer or fruit borer, uh, if you take uh, okra, again it is a shoot borer and fruit borer. Leaf miners are the other common problems. Beetles, uh, in case of cooker bits, uh, these are very common pests. Then fruit flies are very, very common in case of cooker bits. This is in broad water field, the major group of the pests in case of our ethnic vegetables. Uh, please wait, I'm, I'm pressing, it is taking some time for next slide. Coming to the like other crops, common problems which can be attributed in uh, ethnic vegetables is uh, because of uh, indiscriminate use, wherever it is being used, uh, insecticide resistance will be a problem. And a residuous problem is a major one. Uh, two of the ethnic vegetables, what we can truly call, one is uh, uh, bitter guard and uh, bendy in the recent past, 10 years back and uh, uh, three years back also. Some of the con consignments were rejected from European countries 
uh, mentioning the reason that they are containing some thrip species. Thrips pami, one species is there. Uh, 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 that's the reason they have rejected. That is where when these uh, ethnic vegetables are getting mainly exported, we have to be very uh, careful about the incidence of any pest like thrips. Then uh, many of these uh, ethnic chemicals, there are no chemicals registered for uh, these vegetables. Uh, and uh, other minor uh, ethnic vegetables also. That is where we have to make uh, 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 some of the evaluations where safer chemicals can be uh, evaluated and uh, uh, submitted to the insecticide board where they can look after, where uh, minor quantity of the pesticide usage is there. They can extend the level claims in a uh, long-term process that can be done. Then impact of climate change, is it is not a separate for either ethnic or non-ethnic group. This is going to be a problem. Uh, to uh, link with this, recently introduced one of the pests like uh, Thrips parvispinus, which is a problem on Chile. And it, it is already reported on 20 to 25 uh, crops. Uh, uh, one, or, one or two ethnic crops, if you take, suppose, Coxinia, Coxinia, Indica, or other related species, which, are, which can be considered as ethnic, that thrips is uh, causing problem in that crop also. Uh, that is how wherever uh, polyphagous pests are there, uh, because of the climate change or uh, because of the invasive nature, they may come to these ethnics also. We have to be careful regarding those pests uh, because of their polyphagous uh, nature. Uh, another crop is ad lang bang. If you see any of these beans, one of the common problem is aphids, which will be a major problem whenever this humidity is more like a uh, rabi season pest. Uh, we have to keep in uh, keep an vigil on the uh, available, locally available coxnellid beetles. We have to increase them. In the initial stage, before flowering, you can go one or two sprays of this uh, dimethyate. Uh, 2 ml per liter, it will take care. But uh, we there are several coxnellids. If we increase, they will take care of this uh, uh, aphid species. Uh, or we can uh, uh, go with the neem-based products also for its uh, successful management. Then uh, another aspect is uh, what where we have to be careful is curry leaves. Curry leaves being uh, exported very recently because of that uh, nutritive value and there is a lot of demand outside. Uh, if you one study from Tirupati itself, it shows that Triagefas, though it is banned very recently, in 2000, as per 2017 publication, Triagefas was detected above M MRLs. And uh, 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 these type of uh, uh, MRLs to be, uh, whatever is fixed for uh, different insecticides, well, they have to be carefully used, particularly while uh, exporting. Though for exporting, they are checking, even when you are consuming at uh, uh, the local level also, we have to ensure that uh, these MRLs are uh, strictly follow, followed. Then these are some of the insects which, are, which is uh, generally grown under protected conditions uh, because major, majority of them are grown outside. Let us not uh, focus much. Other than insects, another uh, uh, organism which will be a problem in uh, different crops is mite. Uh, what are the different IPM uh, aspects? What we have to follow are this is uh, wherever feasible, weather forecasting, particularly that Sridham uh, is there. Uh, he, uh, he can share that this is particularly true with the, uh, some of the uh, diseases. And uh, we have to follow cultural, mechanical, biological, as a last resort, only chemicals to be followed uh, in, in this group of uh, uh, crops also. What are the different approaches where you can uh, <coughs> maximum uh, emphasis can be given is natural plant derived components, uh, for example, neem based products. Entomopathogenic fungi, bacteria, and nematodes. Uh, now, recently, there are several formulations uh, entomopathogenic, like, like Viviria, <coughs> Metarhizium, or uh, Lecanicillium. All these are coming. This uh, bacterial formulations also there. For nematode, uh, nematodes, uh, uh, EPNs, entomopathogenic nematodes, also uh, can play an important role. Uh, apart from insect growth regulators, uh, other physical control methods, such as heat, cold, and modified atmospheric technology, ionizing uh, radiation. Uh, and uh, uh, even suppose in a <coughs> highly commercial crops, uh, this uh, CRISPR cast like molecular approaches are going. Uh, if there is any, any means well recognized trait is there, even if it is in uh, ethnic crafts, that sort of latest uh, techniques, like, uh, molecular approaches like uh, gene editing, like CRISPR cast uh, can be used. Then what are the other approaches which can be easily used is um, uh, trap crop system, uh, uh, IHR and other insurance. 
they are promoting this like a, a mustard crop in cabbage or cauliflower, uh, marigold in case of uh, <coughs> crops like um, tomato, light traps can be used. And uh, uh, in, in case of curry leaf, what are the major pests? Curry leaf and uh, citrus, they belong to the same family, uh, root essay. That's why this uh, common pest scenario is, uh, which is uh, generally observed in fruit crop, same uh, problems can be observed in curry leaf. Wherein citrus butterfly is a very common problem. Even if you are having in a garden this uh, particular curry leaf, whenever that uh, new flush comes, this citrus butterfly is a common problem. Where simple uh, interventions like BT can be used for this uh, and are uh, like uh, biocontrol through uh, uh, this egg parasite also can be followed. Other pests like uh, psyllids, uh, citrus black fly, they are also common problem. Uh, and uh, by following the safe waiting periods. Uh, say if you are using systemic chemicals, uh, going with this, uh, safe waiting periods is a must. Our biocontrol is the best option. Uh, coming to the pests of leafy vegetables and moringa, whenever suppose uh, uh, amaranthus is grown, it is a very common uh, notice that we will see uh, this leaf, leaf ebbing happens. Uh, yes, even similarly, it, in case of moringa also, several leaves will be webbed together and uh, uh, <coughs> this all chlorophyll will be taken. In case of Moringa, earlier it was only part. Now in many, many parts of India, even a leaf is being used in Karnataka. This is one of the delicacy, this leaf. It is uh, sold like in a vegetable market in bundles. Uh, it is being exported means we can uh, uh, assess what is the importance of that leaf. Uh, that is where we have to protect this leafy vegetables from all leaf eating caterpillars or leaf embers and uh, they have we have to target them what are the other species note the species hairy caterpillars and uh, uh, moringa caterpill, uh, hairy caterpillar which is very common uh, which will settle on the stem and uh, uh, earlier if uh, those were having uh, giving some heat treatment with fire that is a common practice then another common uh, recently increasing problem is pod fly which is a gitona species uh, on this aspect at IHR, some work was uh, done. Uh, chemicals like lambda, salutrin, or spinosad, they were uh, found to be uh, very effective in, the, in uh, managing this particular part fly and moringa. Then uh, an, other common uh, uh, leaf eating uh, uh, pest is Podopra litria. Uh, wherever in uh, repelled to parts, whenever uh, they are ready, Ilcorpa is the common one. Uh, here I try to give what is the management aspects of uh, leaf eating caterpillars. I won't go in detail. When you are dealing with the leaf eating caterpillars, wherever possible for their uh, uh, identification or monitoring, species specific uh, pheromone traps can be used. Biocontrol is the best option, uh, uh, like BT, <coughs> species specific NPV, or release of uh, egg parasitoids. When you are using this biocontrol essence, you have to see what is the prevailing. Uh, 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 temperature in that area. Based on that, we can choose these uh, biocontrol agents. You can use them. Uh, one of the best option for uh, this leaf eating caterpillars is neem extracts containing 5% azadirachtin or uh, simply neem seed uh, kernel extract. If it is difficult to extract kernel, uh, directly neem seed powder extract can be used. IH has come out, uh, it has come out with uh, uh, <coughs> this uh, neem seed pellets. By using that, some of the in some of the crops like cabbage, cauliflower, uh, by taking six seven sprays without any insecticides, these uh, crops can be grown. That way, they can be these botanicals can be promoted uh, uh, in case of this ethnic, particularly leafy vegetables. Then, in case of uh, uh, this is uh, chili, I won't go in detail. And uh, in case of uh, uh, onion, uh, traditionally grown uh, the crops. That's why I mentioned trips to uh, tabasi. Uh, Trips palmi. This is what I was mentioning. Bitter gourd is a <coughs> bitter medicine for sweet disease. This is a, the best medicine. And uh, this photo was sent from Kerala by one of the farmer to me. And this is the photo taken by the European community people after this. After seeing the consignment, they could look at uh, one uh, uh, trips there. As it is in live stage, they have rejected the consignment. And uh, at IHR, we we have initiated some works how to manage this type of uh, pest before sending these con consignments to the foreign that we are working out you, by means of either using uh, C, uh, high, high uh, concentration of CO2 or hot water treatment or use of uh, azadirachtin uh, uh, sprays before harvesting because uh, we have to 
at the same time, we have to be careful with uh, residues also. In that respect, uh, we, we are carrying out some research in this angle. Then pests of Roselle are uh, uh, this uh, uh, gongora, what we call that. Uh, aphids, leaf hoppers, white flies, mealy bugs, and semi -luper. These are the common. Sometimes we feel it is not getting much uh, problematic. Sometimes uh, uh, pests like mealy bugs can be a problem. Uh, for uh, taking care of the mealy bugs, uh, again, there are few products. Uh, <clears throat> First thing is when they have emerged from the eggs, that is the target. Many of the uh, insects will be working. Uh, from IHR, there is one technology like mealy melt because mealy coating is the uh, obstruction for this working of these things. For uh, destroying that mealy coating, mealy melt one formulation has come. The, that is one. Uh, this is what I was telling. Trips pervispinus is a problem in case of chili. But it is also a problem in one of the ma uh, maximum uh, uh, problem in case of uh, uh, this uh, coccinia also it is becoming problem. Uh, here I try to give some of the management aspects. I won't go into detail. Uh, yeah, here whatever the crops in uh, ethnic crops are there, wherever trips problem or leaf miner are there, uh, apart from taking the aerial uh, take care, while taking care of the aerial portions, we have to uh, uh, give some treatments in the soil also because the people stage there, both these people stages will be in the soil. Yeah, this is in general uh, IPM of thrips. I won't take much time here. Uh, then uh, this is the another uh, major problem in tomato, uh, Tuta absoluta. Uh, we have come out with uh, light trap based management of uh, uh, integrated management of this particular pest uh, by using IPM, wherein we have, uh, we are trying to include host plant resistance that is going on, breeding work is going on, biocontrol using Nesidaporus predator mirid bug, uh, similarly using uh, egg parasitite, trichogramma pretiosum, trichogramma chelonis, and biological control using uh, uh, this metarhizium. Here we are, we have already included pheromone traps and the light traps. As a last resort, we have taken chemicals, but we gave a demonstration that what farmers presently using, we could reduce 50% of that spray and uh, we could uh, successfully manage this particular uh, invasive pest. Then serpentine leaf miner is a common problem in different crops. That's what we already explained. Uh, another aspect is red spider mites. Red spider mites, we have very excellent uh, uh, acaricides. We have to make use of them. In the, uh, then this is the mite problem in case of uh, brinjal. This is why white fly and green pea chaffets in different crops. Uh, and pumpkin, <coughs> this is the common uh, uh, pumpkin beetle, which is a problem. This, uh, this can be dealt easily, initial stage only with the neem seed, kernel extract, or one or two sprays of uh, chemicals like fipronil, it will uh, we can take care of this particular one. Uh, another common thing, what I was uh, telling in the beginning, is uh, fruit fly uh, in cucurbits. Generally, there are three species of uh, fruit flies can come here: Jugodacus cucurbitae, <coughs> uh, and uh, other two species will come. How to manage them? If you see, uh, culure is the trap which is generally recommended. Uh, in addition to simply using uh, cooler traps, we have to make some baits, poison baits, by using uh, ja jaggery and protein hydro uh, hydrolysate also, because this will attract even the, some of the females also. In addition to that, uh, IHR is coming out with one product where females also can be attracted. It may not be uh, equal to the proportion of males. Some of the females are getting attracted by incorporation of some of the uh, chiromone chemicals. This is the approach we have to follow, holistic approach for the management of fruit flies in uh, different cucurbits. Then coming to the loose notes, uh, this is the pest wherein uh, in India, 50% of the produce is damaged by uh, only this pest in case of in terms of brinjal. What is the IPM we can follow? Uh, they, there are few farmers who have installed simply this uh, net houses because of this bigger size of the insect, even simple net houses may yield us 0% uh, infestation. If that is not feasible, in that case, what is the different uh, uh, in, uh, tools, IPM tools like pheromone traps, uh, light traps, early stages, neem seed kernel extract, 
and if the incidence is too high, uh, chemicals like imamectin, benzoate, flubendamide, uh, and the use of trichogrammaculonis as uh, this egg parasitide, we can uh, keep this pest under check. We may sometimes we feel do we need that uh, transgenic brinjal or the present methods are okay? This though it is a deba debatable issue. Uh, same brinjal emerging pest is uh, ash weevil. Uh, because this uh, ash weevil immature stage feeds on the roots, we have to drench that uh, root portion also, apart from uh, foliar sprays. Mm, other approaches is that already I have mentioned biorational products we have to encourage, apart from insect growth regulators uh, and uh, molecular techniques also are peaceful in not uh, all ethnics. In one or two uh, important ethnic uh, uh, crops, this uh, molecular techniques, which not only help in insect taxonomy or phylogeny, our population structure. They also help in uh, plant insect or insect natural interactions so that uh, we can use them for uh, correct incorporation of semiochemicals. chemicals. Uh, we can go with the sterile insect technique. This we are using with uh, uh, in uh, uh, cucurbits also. Cucurbit fruit fly can work. Uh, and uh, for fruit flies, this can be used. In case of tuta also we are working. Post plant uh, resistance breeding, strain improvement of entomopathogenic mi microbes is possible. Novel approaches like uh, RNA can also changing fields. Uh, this uh, apart from CRISPR Cas. Uh, this is what I was telling cold plasma atmospheric flow. Cold plasma atmospheric is another aspect wherein uh, different gases are mixed at higher voltage so that radiative uh, molecules will be formed. They will kill these different fungi or uh, smaller insects. It is uh, uh, it, it has worked in some insects uh, as per uh, other studies uh, uh, like tribolium. This also we can try for different insects, uh, uh, particularly when you are intending to uh, export some commodities. Can we make that uh, export commodity free of any living organisms, either fungi or uh, uh, insect? Uh, another is a pushful strategy. It is a well-known uh, strategy is known. By using this, we have to identify some of the crops which will push the insect and means uh, which will repel the insects. At the same time, uh, another insect, another plant which will attract the insect in this uh, uh, both together, uh, which, uh, for example, this is a well-known example where a desmodium is a uh, uh, attractant and whereas napier is a repellent for the uh, uh, maize pest. Uh, similar way, we have to identify the crops in ethnic crops where by using this push pull strategy, we can effectively manage the major pests. Uh, these are a uh, few of the IHR technologies which can be useful for this, uh, this sort of ethnic uh, vegetables like Arca, neem soap for sucking pests, fungamia soap, same, same, neem seed pellets, Arca mealy melt for uh, mealy bugs, uh, light come suction trap, it can be used for different insects. Uh, for the management of nematodes, Trichoderma, Hesianum, Pestlomanus, Lilacinus, Pseudomonas, Florsense, they uh, individually are uh, in uh, consortia mode for the management of nematodes and soil burn pathogens also can be used. To conclude, uh, there is a need to develop organic pest management and residue free integrated crop management in various leaf vegetables and other uh, ethnic vegetables. Uh, thank you. Uh, I might have taken a little more time. Uh, thank you. I will conclude here. Thank you very much, sir. We have covered uh, all the aspects of the uh, insect pest management, starting from the traps, uh, pheromones, uh, uh, host plant assistance, biological control, insect uh, MRL, everything you have covered, sir. Yeah, I yes. request, uh, and including the plasma, cold plasma, the recent um, uh, experiment you are uh, trying. And I request the participants, and I, sir, I. Uh, uh, on behalf of the, all the presenters, I congratulate you for your excellent presentation, sir. And now the presentation is open for discussion. We will have few yeah. questions. Okay. Generally, for lead presentations, they, they don't ask. But uh, if anybody is willing okay, to it ask, is, uh, 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 mutual. if somebody, if you are, they are having some idea, they can uh, incorporate here. That way, it can please. be both ways. Participants, please. Yes, anybody is having any doubts? Yeah, you can proceed, sir. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> sir, yeah, because, proceed, yeah. sir. Hey, if yeah. anybody is having questions, they, they have already requested to put in the 
ஒன்ஸ்ட் அனந்தராஜ்பேட்ட <laughs> and she has been about 23 years of experience in both extension research and teaching and she has organized about 42 training programs and she has published about 70 research papers in various national as well as international journals and she has about 21 proceedings in various symposiums and conferences and she has published 35 uh, uh, research uh, telugu articles and she has conducted several tv programs and she has introduced the, the mushroom culture for the rural women in karnool and kadappa districts and she has also handled one rkv projects and ncp ncpm projects and she is holding one scst supplant projects at present she is running that project and she has guided five msc students as major guide and 17 as the members and five phd students as a member and she has awarded many awards and uh, among them you are indian women achiever award for the year 2020 2021 and she has also a recipient of the achiever award for the year 2018 and she has also awarded with paramount achievement achievement award and rajneshram award for the year 2019 and women scientist award for the year 2020 and outstanding achievement award and dr sarvepalli radhakrishnan national education service award and outstanding scientist award and vishwaguru award for and professor k c mehta memorial award and distinguished scientist award and i now i welcome madam for your invited lecture thank you madam please share
Good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. Good evening, chairman, sir, and the co-chairman, sir. And uh, my topic evening, is uh, strategies in integrated disease management in vegetable crops. One minute, sir. Yes. Vegetables are uh, comes under solanaceous uh, crops, cooked bed crops, coal crops, row crops, and tuber crops, and leafy vegetables. And uh, coming to the area and production of vegetables, India ranks second. Uh, in vegetable production in the world after China. And uh, in case of area of vegetable crops in India during 2020 21 is uh, 10,966,000 hectares. And the production is uh, 1,97,230,000 metric tons according to the agricultural statistics. In financial year 2022, the total production of vegetables was estimated to be approximately 200 million metric tons. The major vegetable crops in India are potato, tomato, onion, cabbage, and cauliflower. And uh, in this topic, uh, I will cover uh, fungal diseases, IDM, and uh, bacterial diseases, IDM, and uh, viral diseases, IDM. Coming to the importance of vegetables, uh, vegetables are uh, important source of vitamins and uh, other nutrients and with uh, therapeutic and nutritional benefits. And uh, these are more succulent and nutrient rich, and uh, they are uh, more likely uh, to be affected with uh, many pest and uh, diseases. Uh, the major diseases are fungal, bacterial, viruses, and nematodes. And uh, the yield losses has to be estimated as 26% uh, due to diseases, and uh, pests also 26% uh, are recorded. And uh, Emma, uh, according to the Sivaling Swami and co workers, uh, uh, recorded 100% yield losses uh, due to viral diseases vectored by insects. Next one is Irish famine that is uh, caused by late plate of potato. Potato is a stable food and uh, it is a mono uh, crop uh, in uh, Ireland and it is a stable food. So, uh, one third of uh, population was entirely dependent on potato. Due to this epidemic disease, uh, the potato crop is completely devastated. As a result, one million uh, Irish pupil uh, starved to death and another 1.5 million people migrated to another countries. Mm -hmm. the emerging diseases uh, in India and uh, uh, bacterial wilt uh, it is one of the threat uh, in the solanaceous vegetables, potato, tomato, capsicum and uh, brinjal. Mm, and uh, invasive diseases are tomato leaf curl and utility virus was first described in tomato and uh, it is severe in cucumber, melon crops and uh, uh, cardiac crop and it is an emerging uh, bipartite and pegoma virus affecting cucurbits in France and uh, later jujubo uh, uh, which is broom disease, uh, that is a phytoplasma disease, is also uh, noticed the first time in India and also uh, 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 zebra chip disease in potato caused by candidates, liberobacters, 
சலனை சீரம் அண்ட் ஆலிவ் குவிக் டிக்ளைன் சின்ட்ரோம் டிசீஸ் காஸ்ட் பை எக்ஸைல ஃபேஸ்டியோசா சப்ஸ்பீஷிஸ் பாசா இன் டொமேட்டோ அண்ட் ப்ரௌன் ரூபோஸ் ஃப்ரூட் வைரஸ் ஆல்சோ நோட்டீஸ் டேஸ் இன்வேசிவ் டிசீஜஸ் அண்ட் ஒன் மோர் டிசீஸ் தட் இஸ் இன்வேசிவ் டிசீஸ் ஸ்ரீலங்கன் கசாவா மொசாய்க் வைரஸ் ஆல்சோ நோட்டீஸ்டு அட் ப்ரெசென்ட் த எமர்ஜிங் டிசீஸஸ் ஆர் ஆனியன் ஃபிஸ்டர் பிளைட் அண்ட் கம்மிஸ் டெம்பிளைட் இன் மெலன் கிராப்ஸ் இன் ஆந்திர பிரதேஷ் coming to the integrated disease management what is the importance of why we are adopting integrated disease management uh, green revolution it is one of the uh, biggest success story of india so there is a drastic increase uh, in uh, total uh, food grain production after uh, this green revolution period many hybrids and uh, uh, improved varieties were used with uh, increased fertilizers and pesticide consumption over and misuse of uh, this indiscriminate use of uh, pesticides lead to the environmental problems and resulting the development of uh, integrated disease management concept so the aim of uh, integrated disease management concept is eradicating the pest or disease completely but keeping its uh, population uh, below the economic injury level so it is a holistic approach so the uh, idm is defined as uh, it involves management systems which utilize a compatible combinations of all the available techniques to keep the pathogen population below the economic threshold level and there are five principles of integrated disease management avoidance exclusion of inoculum and uh, eradication protection and therapy and disease resistance the cultural methods are uh, uh, most important that is uh, sanitation roguing eradication of alternate and collateral hosts crop rotation uh, manures and fertilizers changing the time of sowing etc Uh, next these are the cultural practices and uh, what are the main strategies of integrated disease management um, first uh, we apply need based application of pesticides or fungicides and encouragement and uh, enhancement of biocontrol agents and uh, use of resistant or tolerant varieties uh, uh, of uh, different uh, vegetables and uh, modifications of cultural practices and uh, use of any other strat- strategies uh, that uh, interrupts host pathogen interactions Uh, and uh, these are the components of ipm and uh, these are the fungal diseases in a different uh, vegetable crops this is the alternaria diseases uh, uh, in different vegetables and alternaria species alternaria solanae alternaria uh, alternata in different vegetables so these are the coltotrichum diseases and uh, coltotrichum species and the uh, phytophthora diseases and the uh, phytophthora species uh, in different uh, vegetable crops and powder mildew and uh, downy mildew diseases and these are the fusarium mildew and uh, rhizoctonia solanae uh, rhizoctonia diseases in different vegetables and uh, gummy stemblight uh, and uh, disease in uh, watermelon muskmelon uh, bottle gourd and rich gourd it is caused by didymella bryonia and uh, these are the different diseases in onion it is they are purple leaf blight stem phylum leaf blight anthracnose and uh, uh, parasitic weed that is onion cascuta and the rust and smut diseases in beans so this is uh, these are the sclerotium diseases and the cercospora foliar diseases coming to the integrated disease management of uh, fungal diseases in vegetables uh, the most effective strategy in management of uh, fungal diseases to avoid the Uh, sources of inoculum and uh, do not store the seed year after year uh, in case of uh, potato and uh, remove the weed hosts and uh, follow the crop rotation uh, with uh, non solanaceous hosts and uh, and uh, grow intercrop intercrops guard crops and uh, trap crops select healthy planting material and uh, raised seed beds and uh, soil sterilization and uh, some physical methods uh, and uh, disease forecasting models also we followed and green manuring crops and uh, some botanicals also we should follow and uh, seed treatment techniques with the bio agents and chemicals also and the copper fungicides uh, uh, may be dropped in dry weather conditions in case of crucifers and uh, uh, diseases and uh, maintain a high level of plant vigor with uh, proper uh, integrated nutrient management and uh, we should uh, cultivate uh, resistant varieties in vegetable crops and the leafy vegetables against uh, white rust that is caused by albuto blighti um, some resistant varieties are developed darka nilachal ruchita and darka nilachal uh, ruchita and darka uh, nilachal bainanchi and, uh, and uh, some uh, 
vegetable grafting also followed uh, in case of a brinjal grafting brinjal with the uh, salanum torum and uh, application methods of biocontrol agents and chemicals also very important in case of seed treatment uh, uh, with fungicides and bio agents chirayu or bio priming with the uh, um, bio agents and the uh, soil drenching or soil application of bio agents and uh, arca microbial consortium and uh, ISR uh, PCPR capsules also yeah, we should use it in integrated disease management. This is an enrichment of FIM with the bio agents. This technology uh, also adopted in uh, fields of farmers. And uh, these are the biocontrol agents in case of uh, brinjal, chili, tomato, onion, and cucurbits. And uh, among this, uh, Trichoderma viride, Trichoderma hargeanum, Trichoderma reset, and uh, Trichoderma aspirillum. Uh, and, uh, Ampelomyces fiscalis, these are the important bio agents used against fungal and back soil borne diseases. Next, these are the commercially available uh, biocontrol agents, uh, calicina in case of uh, non -pathogen pathogenic strains of Aspergillus niger and uh, biotrox, uh, etc. These are the solanaceous crops, uh, resistant sources, uh, uh, recently de uh, developed multiple disease resistant varieties, against tomato leaf cut, bacterial wilt and early blight, that is uh, Arca Aditya, Arca Visesh, Arca Apexia varieties, and uh, in case of brinjal and uh, recently chili crop also, uh, some leaf cut resistant varieties are developed by Dr. YSR Hitchin. Mm, that is LCA 657, that is Kranti, LCA 680, Charita, Chaitra, and LCA 684, Tanvi varieties. And these are the varieties released uh, in 2022 by Dr. YSR Horticultural University. Mm, and uh, and uh, coming to the fungicides, mm, fungicides are also important uh, in uh, integrated disease management. Uh, according to the need-based uh, uh, application, uh, we should use uh, some uh, Bordeaux mixer, copper oxychloride, copper fungicides. Uh, and these are the used as a prophylactic treatment and uh, capped on th chlorothalonin, some um, metal oxide, mancojep, these are the, and uh, pyramidon plus mancojep, uh, and uh, azoxystrobin, strobin group of fungicides also uh, important in case of uh, uh, disease, disease management. And we should use uh, uh, registered chemicals, but not... Uh, 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 there are, and also we should use potassium phosphonate 3 ml per liter of water and uh, according this uh, chemicals we should uh, add with mineral oil or paraffin oil and uh, some wetting agents also used as uh, sticking agents. In case of uh, um, this is a research work uh, according to the Anita Kumari et al. Uh, uh, IDM package is developed uh, for the control of uh, all diseases in case of tomato, that is nursery treatment and uh, main crop, uh, main field treatment with uh, seed pro and uh, some chemicals and used for the control of early blight, late blight, bacterial leaf spot, bacterial uh, tomato leaf curl diseases. Mm. And uh, this is an integrated disease management study uh, on growth and agronomical characters uh, against a fusarium root rot in coriander. Uh, according to this uh, study, uh, not only control the disease management, but uh, um, the important growth parameters also increased by using uh, uh, application of neem cake as well as uh, trichoderma hargeanum. And uh, this is a uh, uh, field experiment uh, conducted in farmers' fields, that is uh, chili wilt uh, with uh, IPM and non IPM plants with the two varieties, Davenur Deluxe and Super 10, in case of a chili irrigated uh, ecosystem in Karnal district. And uh, according to this, uh, um, uh, cost benefit ratio, uh, highest cost benefit ratio was recorded in IPM plots. And uh, the next coming to the bacterial diseases, and some common uh, copper fungicides, uh, uh, used for the control of bacterial diseases, copper sulfate, copper hydroxide, and uh, copper uh, oxychloride and Bordeaux mixer, Bordeaux paste uh, are important uh, copper-based fungicides. And uh, some antibiotics also used for the control of uh, bacterial diseases that are the streptomycin sulfate uh, derived 
derived from streptomyces griseus uh, and it has antibacterial activity and uh, streptocycline plantomycin agrimycin and uh, fasciculomycin sulfate and uh, ampicillin etc mm, and the copper compounds has been introduced in 1880 for the management of uh, plant bacterial diseases and the copper based formulations and synthetic antibiotics are the major chem chemicals used for the control of bacterial diseases in uh, at present uh, streptocycline was banned uh, um, in case of bacterial disease management uh, from uh, february 1st 2022 uh, in addition to this uh, february, january 1st 2024 it will be completely banned uh, coming to the idm of bacterial diseases in vegetables uh, the most important idea uh, package are crop rotation with uh, cereals and, and uh, some vegetable crops like uh, garlic and uh, French bean and uh, um, cereals and seed treatment with the seed pro as well as uh, seedling dip method and uh, soil uh, application of uh, this seed pro and uh, anti uh, this bio, bio agents also and foliar application and uh, drenching with the COC plus uh, antibiotic uh, uh, also recommended and uh, basal application of bleaching powder uh, 6 kg per acre also recommended for the control of bacterial diseases and uh, use of uh, biocontrol agents uh, pseudomonas fluorescence uh, bacillus subtilis uh, and uh, non pathogenic strains of pseudomonas syringe strain and pseudomonas uh, um, uh, uh, fluorescence streptomyces uh, uh, species uh, are uh, also used as biocontrol agents and use of bacteriophages and uh, bacteriocins and plant extracts also used for the control of bacterial diseases. These are the commercially available biocontrol products for the control of bacterial diseases. Um, Pseudomonas fluorescence, streptomyces. Uh, and these are the uh, commercial formulations of biocontrol agents, IAHR, Pseudomonas fluorescence, galetrol, etc. And uh, by using bacterial disease, by using bacteria phase also we can control the uh, bacterial diseases. Uh, bacterial bacteria phases are uh, viruses, especially infecting uh, um, and in bacteria as antimicrobial agents, leading to the degradation of bacterial host. And uh, bacteriocins also antimicrobial compounds. So these are the uh, commercial. Uh, uh, Bacteriophages in plant disease management. Uh, bacteriophages are listed uh, in this uh, table. And uh, application of bacteriophages in a uh, field application also. Uh, uh, important, uh, these are the bacterial diseases, uh, bacterial wilt of tomato and uh, soft rot in case of potato and bacterial wilt of potato. And the soft rot in onion are controlled by using uh, bacteria phases and uh, they are commercially available phase products also available uh, bio style and phase fire by, uh, and uh, these are some bacteria since uh, also developed by con control of uh, bacterial diseases and uh, some plant extracts also uh, recommended for the control of bacterial diseases uh, as that recta indica asimum leaf extract, garlic pulp extract, calotropis. These are the some plant extracts. And the next coming to the viral diseases. Viral diseases are uh, some tospo viruses and uh, um, begomo viruses and uh, in case of vegetables. Uh, in integrated disease management practices for the control of leaf curled uh, virus in case of chili, you should uh, grow uh, the leaf curl resistant varieties in case of chili and the following integrated management practices that is the green manure crops um, and uh, along with the FIM 10 tons per hectare and vermicompost 2 tons per uh, acre and a neem cake uh, 200 kgs per acre and application of biofertilizers uh, as per uh, azospirillum or astrobacter and potash solubilizing bacteria and uh, these are the some uh, modules are developed uh, for the control of viral diseases and the Mole of weeds like parthenium, um, datura, etc., and the seed treatment with imidacloprid, uh, 8 grams per kg of seed, follow, and uh, followed by macrojep, and the seedling root tip method also uh, we should follow, and uh, growing of seedlings under. Uh, uh, 40 to 60 mesh uh, with the uh, nylon net for the control of sucking pest and uh, mulching uh, that is silver mulch is also used for the control of sucking pest and application of some uh, uh, pesticides for the control of sucking pest uh, 
fipronil uh, granules and uh, soil application of uh, fipronil granules and gra growing uh, two, two to three rows of sorghum or maize or uh, um, bajra for the control of uh, sucking pest and the removal and burning of virus infected uh, plants in the field and uh, yellow sticky traps eight to ten per acre and uh, spraying of neem based products like uh, azadirictin and use uh, avoid the use of uh, synthetic pyrethroids and unauthorized byproducts also and uh, spraying insecticides wise uh, acetate uh, or uh, imidacloprid or uh, chloranthriprol or thiamethaxim are recommended for the control of uh, sucking pest like white fly and uh, rips. And uh, this is a field experiment uh, on integrated disease management in Chile. Uh, this, this is a border crop with bajra and uh, raised beds and uh, silver mulch is used in this uh, experiment. Mm. In this, uh, there are uh, seven treatments are there. Uh, in case of first uh, treatment, application of neem cake in nursery bed, as well as main field also, uh, that is uh, size of fire uh, 1.8 ml per liter of water uh, before transplanting and also uh, seedling dip method of uh, imidacloprid and uh, growing four rows of peril millet and uh, spraying of acetate and uh, these are the treatments. Among these treatments, uh, um, uh, fifth treatment that is, uh, uh, in the C treatment with the nursery, nursery bed treatment and as well as main field management is also used in this experiment that is size fire 1.8 ml per liter from before transplanting and also used as a foliar spray up to fruit formation. This is the novel approaches in management of fungal and bacterial and viral diseases. Uh, host plant resistance, it is the only method for controlling the um, diseases in vegetables and the consortia of different bioagents and uh, fungicides from fungi, uh, also strobilin groups uh, uh, are important and uh, in case of uh, fungal diseases and uh, the antibacterial compounds also important. They have anti antibacterial activity and the antiviral compounds from fungi, and also some bacteriophages are also important for the control of uh, bacterial diseases. Coming to the conclusion of this topic, no single solution to tackle the disease problem. We should follow cultural, biological, physical, and chemical management practices in promising to reduce the plant diseases in vegetable crops. Uh, so IDM strategy proved to be for the management of uh, these diseases together, the problems of uh, plant health hazards and environmental pollution. So uh, we should care about the uh, health of the farmers also important and the availability of botanicals uh, as well as biopesticides also, um, not biopesticides, bioregulators also important for the, the sustainable management of uh, uh, agriculture and the commercialization of IDM practices or IDM technologies are also um, important in case of both public and private stakeholders. And uh, agrochemicals such as antibiotics, uh, copper-based uh, chemicals are used for the control of bacterial diseases and also some bacteria phase also developed for the control of uh, diseases uh, instead of uh, these uh, controlled uh, conditions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for the exhaustive uh, account of the all the uh, diseases, uh, both uh, fungal, bacterial, viral diseases and management and covering all the crops. I request the participants to make their queries. Anybody is having any doubt? Any clarification? Anyone wants to make any questions or? Sir. If there are no sir, questions. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Yes, can yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Hello. Stop. Can you hear me? Yeah, you are audible to me. 
What about that? I think they are not able to hear me. But uh, Anantara Jukaiti, they are not able to hear me. That Tanuja? Dr. Tanujai, please check your <clears throat> microphone. Yeah, others are also reacting. They are uh, oh, uh, hearing you. I think there is problem there, I think. Yeah, there only, there only. That, that Tanuja, are you able to hear me? Yeah, then that is a problem from that side only. Where they are unable to hear both of us. Say that Dr. Sudharani and all they are able to hear me. I think there yeah, is yeah. problem there only. Problem is with that system. Oh, it's audible, sir. sir. It's audible. Yeah. Audible, na? Okay, okay. And that's Sridham. Please go ahead. Now that it is audible. Yes. Sir, so shall we go ahead with? I have received the information from the organizers that we can go up to seven thirty. Okay. Right. Uh huh. So shall we proceed with uh, some more presentation, sir? Yeah, at least you can plan. Uh, that, uh, Madam, you just uh, explain about the timing is common like other sessions yes, only, yeah. 5 plus 2. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, let them stick to that. Sreenam, yes, you can uh, announce to the participants. Five minutes presentation, yes. two minutes discussion. Um, yes, sir. Uh, let them stick to the time because time also matters in uh, scoring. Yeah. Okay. We shall, we shall start the presentation as uh, Dr. Sridhar sir told. Uh, we will be monitoring the time and uh, scoring will be done for the time taken. We can start with the first uh, presentation. First presentation is by Hitesh GR on behavioral response. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. And as per the list they, they have circulated, uh, Sai Meghna is first. Hello, sir. Yeah. That is yes. sir. Sai this is for the poster, sir. Okay. Sai Meghna okay. is poster. Okay. This is right. a oral right. presentation, Hitesh Jia. Yes, sir. Okay. Hitesh. Yes, sir. Okay, right. 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 Hello, sir. Five plus two minutes. Yes, sir. Sharings. Hello, sir. Is it uh, visible, sir? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, myself, G.R. Hitesh, and I'm going to present about the topic on behavioral response of Kilonymus ex maculata to the volatiles from Brevicorni brassica and cabbage crop. Coming to cabbage, it belongs to the cold crop cruciferous vegetables, where the in cabbage production uh, e, uh, area is uh, 4 lakh hectares are growing. In that, uh, the West Bengal state is uh, the leading producer of the cabbage. Coming to cabbage, it is uh, attacked by various species like aphids, DBM, then uh, painted bag bagrada, uh, then leaf feber. Among all these, the cabbage aphid brevicorni brassica is a primary pest worldwide. This nymphs and adults of the aphids suck the sap from the leaves and head. As a result, the plant will go stunted growth. Or uh, almost uh, 30 to 96 percent yield loss can be observed due to the cabbage aphid. As in case of like Haryana, Punjab, the majority of the farmers are going for uh, 16 applications of uh, insecticide spraying repeatedly for the control of this aphid and DBM. For this uh, biological control aspect, uh, whenever the cabbage is infested by the aphid infestation, some of the volatile organic compounds are released. Due to this, some of the kilonymous sex maculata, sex maculata use these cues. Uh, they will detect and lo locate where the aphids are feeding on the host plant. The main objective is the purpose to study, determine the volatile organic compounds between the healthy and uninfested plants by cabbage aphid uh, through GCMS analysis. And we have seen the, the Y-tube olfactometer studies, the orientation, response, and time taken to reach the water source and control source. Then this is the extraction and identification of the volatile chemical compounds. First, the 
cabbage is uh, sown in the plot uh, pot and we have covered with the mesh to prevent the insect attack that is uh, after 45 days after sowing we have taken the uninfested leaf extract then uh, cabbage with without aphid cabbage already infested with aphid we have removed the aphid that is the without aphid extract and cabbage with aphid extract we have taken and cabbage uh, and aphid only extract this three three this three we have taken like uh, 50 grams we have cut with the help of scissors with the small pieces and we have soaked in the dcm and dee it is like uh, one is uh, uh, 50 one is to three ratio like 50 grams means 150 ml of solvent we have taken dcm is, is a slightly polar and de is non-polar solvent and uh, after overnight uh, soaking we have did the filtration through sodium anhydrous sulfate uh, where the water is removed from the extract after that uh, immediately we went with charcoal where the decolorization of the solvent uh, extract will take place after that rotary evaporimeter is used for dcm for uh, 45 to 40 to 45 degrees and for de 45 to 50 degrees after this uh, uh, final evaporimeter, the concentration is the 100% stock solution. We have taken the GCMS vials and we have poured 1 ml and we have kept it uh, minus 80 degree refrigerator. And finally, we have used it for GCMS studies and white tube olfactometer studies. From this GCMS, we have seen the different volatile and the chemical compounds uh, present in this uh, uninfested and infested cabbage plant. And this is the white tube olfactometer where will be the two water arm will be there and one uh, water arm and control arm will be there and main stem arm will be there. In this stem arm, we will release the chelonimus ex maculata beetles where we have collected from the field condition. After that, uh, eight hours starvation we did. And we have at, at a time, we released 10 beetles and we have seen for 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, like that, eight replications we have did separate for male and female beetles. Uh, once across, once uh, for the water arm, it will cross half of the, we will note the time at which time it crossed in orientation response uh, uh, we had noted. And, uh, uh, from this, we have seen that uh, different volatile components uh, through the DCM extract. Uh, in GCMS extraction, we have seen from uh, UL means uninfested leaf and WAS cabbage uh, with infested leaf. Uh, in uh, uninfested leaf, we have seen uh, 23 uh, compounds uh, and with aphid extract, we have seen 36 compounds. When comparison with both this, uh, whenever the with aphid extract, uh, cabbage with aphid, uh, 2 hexanol, 3 hexane, 1 nol, and thiazol 5 methyl, 3 hexanol, 1 acetate. And these are the compounds are increased in with aphid extract when compared to uninfested leaf extract, the volatile concentration is very low. In case of DE extract, uh, we have seen the uninfested leaf, uninfested leaf of cabbage plant, we have seen 20 compounds. Whereas in case of with aphid extract, cabbage with infested leaf, we have seen 37 compounds. And uh, uh, 3 pentene 2 ohm and 3 hexane 1 ohm and thiazol 5 methyl and 3 hexanol 1 acetate. And these are the compounds where more when the cabbage is infested with aphid when compared with uninfested leaf extract. And we have seen the orientation response for male and female chelonimus uh, sex maculata at uh, different uh, extracts. Uh, different concentrations we have made like 1%, 5%, 10%, 15% of that stock solution. In this, the DC3 extract. DC3 means cabbage with along with aphid extract. In this, at 5% concentration and DE3 at 5% concentration, the orientation response was 70% and 75% we can observe. In case of female, the orientation response is more, that is in DC3 extract, same cabbage with infested leaf, 81% uh, and DE3 extract, 73% of orientation response towards the water source was observed when compared to the control. And uh, orientation time response also we have seen. In this, uh, for male and female, uh, the orientation response time at 5% concentration, DC3 means cabbage with infested leaf. There is the water, at the water arm, the orientation response time is very less. It is taking 3.96 minutes. Uh, and in case of female, 3.66 minutes it is taking. And in case of uh, orientation response time to DEE extract, at 5% concentration, we have seen like... Uh, uh, cabbage with infested leaf, 4.08 minutes it is taking to reach the water arm. And in case of female, 3.95 minutes it is taking to uh, reach the water arm. And from this, we have seen that uh, GCMS analysis for volatiles, it, it describes the differences, what are the compounds present between the infested and infested cabbage crops. And uh, from can help role in attracting the natural enemies of beetle. And orientation response uh, through olfactometer we have did. And uh, it is indicated that Chelonimus ex maculata is uh, attracting more to the infested plant when compared to uninfested plant. From this GCMS analysis, what are the volatiles are present? These volatiles we can uh, take from the market and we can study with individual uh, individual chemical we should study. And with the help of that chemical, what are the chemicals? Uh, they are giving more orientation response. We can develop a blend of that uh, of that compound and we can keep in uh, field so that whenever the cabbage aphid is infested this beetles will attract due to the volatile blend and will 
uh, reduce the uh, cabbage aphid in the field condition. And uh, thank you, sir. Say there, sir. It is your domain. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, good starting uh, work. Uh, here, still you have to study the individual compounds. Suppose yes, sir. if yes, you sir. apply the crude leaf extract after aphid infestation, yes, sir. Uh, will there be any enhancement of the biocontrol in your idea? Or you have tried that one? Sir, uh, already, what are the chemicals I had identified, sir? Uh, uh, my... Individual chemicals also identified? Ah, yes, sir. Some chemicals are identified, sir, like styrene. Like, I, I did not identify, sir, but my same batchmate, he did work, sir, based on my compounds and the previous compounds, uh, uh, like Venkana, sir, had did uh, related to cowpea aphid, sir. Uh, then, the as a practical, from the uh, suppose uh, combined work, uh, yes, as a practical approach, what is your recommendation for enhancing chelonous uh, sex maculatus uh, in brevicorinia management? Yes, sir. Using CMA chemicals. What is your recommendation? Final recommendation. Sir, still uh, it is in process, sir. But uh, styrene, styrene chemical and the three hexanol uh, chemical had given more response, sir. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was telling. Okay. Uh, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Any other queries? Hitesh, I have one more observation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At least in the title, you could have explained, expanded the genus name, Kilominus. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. No, nowhere yes. this uh, Kilominus name I could see in the presentation. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. What, sir. what is the other name? name? What is, is Minocalis or Kilominus, which is latest? Sir, Minocalis Mino Mino is latest. Huh? Me, uh, uh, Coxinella septum punctata, that is uh, farmer. This is latest, sir. Kilominus ex maculata is latest. No, no, no. That is different, no? Ah, that is Kilo different, sir. Me Minocalis is uh, farmer, sir. Later is uh, Kilonymus ex maculatus. Right, right, right. Yes, sir. Yes. The title, we cannot write the uh, abbreviated form. Yes, sir. Yeah, in title, it should be, it should have been expanded. Right? Okay, sir. Okay, definitely, sir. I will. All the best. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Presentation. Mm -hmm. Mr. P. B. Raghu Teja. Raghu Teja. Sir, good evening, sir. Please, please. Sir, can I please share the screen, sir? I have sent a PPT, sir. I request the organizers, moderators, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are free. Okay, shall I start, sir? Yes, yes, please. Good evening to all the dignitaries. Uh, please uh, go next, sir. That is the first slide. Uh, go uh, next, sir. That's it. That is the animation. That's it. That slide only. That is the animation. That's it. Okay, okay. You continue. Well, uh, don't lose the time. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Good evening to all the dignitaries. Uh, uh, my name is uh, P. Viswanath Raguteja from Dr. Vaisa Horticultural University. Uh, today, on, the, on this occasion of uh, National Conference on Ethnic Vegetables, I would like to present my uh, work. Uh, I would like to present my abstract on uh, field efficacy of different biopesticides against invasive rugose spiraling whitefly, Allegonticus rubiopeculatus martin under low infestation grade index. Next. Okay, uh, coming to brief introduction about coconut, it is uh, cultivated in 2.18 million hectares uh, with a production of 21,206.74 uh, million nuts. Uh, it is uh, briefly known as the Kalpa Vruksha. And uh, in the recent era, an exotic and invasive rugose fiddling whitefly, that is Elegoticus rubiopeculatus, uh, was found to be infesting uh, this uh, coconut plantations uh, during August to September 2016 in, uh, it was, it was in which uh, first time reported from Polachi of uh, Tamil Nadu. 
in andhra pradesh it was reported uh, firstly at uh, kadiyapulanka nursery gardens during late uh, december 2016 coming to next next slide please coming to the to my object of investigation to evaluate various as per the scale given by uh, srinivasan et al 2017 rugos paralleling white fly infestation was classified into three types uh, that is low instance medium instance and high instance low instance means less than 10 spirals per leaflet uh, medium means 10 to 20 whereas high means uh, greater than 20 spirals per leaflet these are the different treatments uh, which includes uh, entomopathogenic fungi such as bivaria basiana isaria fumarosa nbr uh, pfu5 strain metarhizium anisoplea lecanicillium um, azadrectin soap net jet water spray and control next slide please coming to material and methods uh, the variety with is not audible for me yeah yeah not audible that is was uh, tested was a uh, east coast all uh, with the sites uh, in which uh, that uh, that trail was some center program and second uh, 22 when the infestation of rsw was at a peak peak uh, stage next slide please next slide okay the data was collected on uh, and adults then on uh, fronds as well as on leaf was also collected and uh, this uh, data was uh, statistically analyzed using simple rpd design coming to results uh, next slide uh, this is the the table one uh, indicates uh, the hysteria fumarosa was found to be effective against uh, rsw incidence and intensity during the first season as well as during the second season that is uh, 2020 to 21 and 2021 to 22 uh, whereas uh, please go move on to next slide man uh, this uh, Uh, this is the pooled uh, data, madam. Pooled data of two years, that is 2020 to 21 and 2021 to 22. Is there a film that was found to be effective against RSW incidence and uh, intensity? Next slide, please. Uh, in coming to nymph nymph cells of RSW. Uh, this other attack in 10,000 ppm at a dosage of one liter per liter uh, was found to be infective, found to be effective against uh, this RSW nymphal stages uh, with a percent reduction of 56.71 and a uh, percent reduction of control was uh, 75.93, uh, followed by Isaria uh, fumarosa rosea and uh, this uh, soap nut also. They are also uh, was found to be on par with uh, other treatment. Next slide, please. next slide please madam please go to next slide madam uh, the table 5 also indicates uh, that azadrectin was found to be superior during the second season against uh, rsw nymphs uh, with the uh, highest percent reduction and uh, reduction over control this uh, pool data also indicates the same uh, that uh, az- the superior active of azadrectin 10000 ppm against uh, rsw nymphs please go to next slide madam the in case of uh, rsw adults uh, tested during the two experimental trials isaria fumarosa was found to be effective ju- during the first season second season as well as during the pool season in first season the percent reduction was 55.60 and in second season uh, the percent reduction was uh, 49% uh, whereas in uh, the pool data has given the percent reduction of uh, of uh, rsw adults uh, with uh, f- around 52% please go to table 9 madam next uh, slide table 9 the which indicates the super reactive of isaria fumarosa against rsw adults with the uh, 45% 45.74% reduction and 52.99% reduction over control please go to last slide 
this are the mycosis of uh, isaga fumosogosia on nymphs and adults uh, and also ataka entomopathogenic fungi such as lecanicillium lecani and uh, on uh, rsw nymphs and adults uh, how it has uh, it was found to be infecting uh, this rsw life stages next uh, next slide man the infection of uh, bivega basiana on nymphs and adults uh, this is the infect infection on uh, adult metagasium and isoplea on adults please go to next slide coming to some again conclusions uh, uh, the azadrectin 10000 ppm was found to be effective against rsw nymphs vega cesarea fumosogosia superior on uh, adults uh, in case of uh, pest instance and intensity the isaria fumosogosia and br pfu5 treated palms uh, was found to be recorded with uh, less uh, low intensity and uh, instance of uh, low instance and intensity of rsw so we can also go for further investigations on combined usage usage of both azadrectin and uh, isaria fumosogosia and br pfu5 which could be helpful for the effective management of uh, coconut uh, rsw thank you thank you teja sir sridhar sir you can ask questions yeah, yeah okay <laughs> one uh, small question is uh, per ml how many spores were there there is a recommendation minimum these number of spores per ml na? what is one into score? one into oh. 10 to the power of 8 uh, colony forming units per ml sir for all the formulations is it equal because we have used everything 5 ml per liter okay. uh, whether all those formulations they had a same uh, protocol to make it uh, uh, that 1 into 10 to the power of 8 per ml how do you ensure that one no sir uh, only one uh, this is area is from uh, nbr strain sir rest all are uh, they were from uh, commercial formulations sir Yeah, yeah, because so, in uh, big, control uh, entomo pathogens, so that is one of the aspect, so that you can uh, uniformly you can gauge what is the toxicity. That uniformity uh, we should ensure, na. That's what that's one that's thing. And another thing, good. what is this azadrectin 10,000 ppm, which uh, because it is available in one percent and five percent also. Have yes, you sir. tried 1.5 also ml or only one ml? Only one ml, sir. One ml per liter. Is it the yes, recommended sir. concentration, or it can be tried higher also? One small doubt I have. We can try, sir. We can try uh, higher also, sir. Can I can they a... this uh, Icery and Azadrectin they are compatible? Yes, sir. But uh, we can go, sir, for the for the investigation, sir. First, uh, we need to test uh, under laboratory conditions, and uh, yeah, yeah, if uh, it was. Uh, once we have to ensure, na, then we can uh, go with that. Yeah. Then can uh, now we are reaching up to what percentage? Suppose if we want eighty ninety percent, what we can do? Eighty ninety percent. What? Thirty percent damage is too high, yes, and uh, generally in coconut, don't go for any insecticide sprays. Yes, that sir. is the general recommendation. Yes, sir. What should be our next step? so actually we should start uh, with uh, we should start uh, initiating the management uh, practices from low instance itself sir from low okay. instance uh, after the spraying of this uh, isaria fumosogosia and azadrectin 10000 ppm we should also go for the uh, release of this generalis generalist predator sir that is apatocarisa aster uh, which was a mass which is a mass standardized at uh, horticultural research station ambaji pet sir so okay we should start this uh, when the rsw infestation starts uh, start, uh, start, uh, starts uh, during the month of october to november sir that is uh, during winter season the infestation starts and uh, it will reaches to the peak uh, at the month of uh, in the month of january to february sir and slowly it comes down uh, when the summer season starts uh, coming sir yeah, yeah. okay 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 now sridham can Okay, I have one query. Okay, sir. sir. Compared to the metarhizium bevaria, is it easy to mass multiply Isaria? Yes, is sir. there any yes, problem in mass production of Isaria fumarosia? Fumarosia. Mass, mass multiplication. Uh, is there any problem? Have you come across be... in the literature? Sir, uh, if you want to go for. Uh... Repair solid formulation means that is uh, using the rice uh, granules means uh, we should be careful uh, that uh, the culture will, will do not get any the culture does not get any contamination sir. 
I am asking any mass production problems are there because Bavaria and uh, Metarhizium have uh, they are gaining popularity compared to the Isaria. Is there any problem in the mass production? No, sir. There is no problem, sir. Only thing is that we should be we should be safe uh, without any contamination. Uh, Whether, sir, just uh, Sridhar, sir, I wanted to know whether 10,000 ppm will be higher dose? Well, 10, uh, sir, yeah, actually, actually this, this agenda, 10, actually, even 50,000 yeah. also there, 50,000 also there, their dose okay. will be more, maximum 0.5 ml, and 10,000 can be 1 ml, okay, whether it is, uh, whether they, they tried by chance to 1.5 ml, 10,000 it is available. Uh, what is that one? What is commercial name of that one? Achuk, sir, Achuk. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, because Nimajala also coming at the same ten thousand PPM. Okay, we'll okay, okay. Thank you, Teja. We'll go to the next presentation. Sir, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sarada, Sarada Gaja. Fruit fly species diversity in muskmelon. Sir, she will be presenting or physically here. Okay, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can mute yourself. Raghu Teja, you can mute. Don't <laughs> ఇక్కడ <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's moving, it's moving. You can try. Good evening to uh, good evening, all. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. G. Sharada, working as associate professor in the Department of Entomology at the College of Horticulture and Antaraj Beta. Uh, uh, at first, to welcome you all to the National Conference on Ethnic Vegetables. So today's my topic is uh, fruit fly species diversity in muskmelon grown area, growing areas of uh, Rayalaseema region of Andhra Pradesh. 
So here, the first our objective of work here is uh, to survey and identify the varied species of fruit flies infesting muskmelon crop in different districts of Andhra Pradesh, uh, like uh, Anantapur, Kadapa, and Kannur districts. And uh, this work we have carried out during 2018 and 19. And the location of work is at College of Horticulture, Anantrajpur. Then coming to the fruit flies, which belongs to the family, Pefriti Day, and uh, uh, which is the largest family of the uh, con consisting of economic, economically important uh, fruit fly species consists of more, uh, nearly four, more than 4,500 species of identified fruit fly species, which are uh, and again classified into four subfamilies like Dacinae, Phytolaminae, Tefritinae, and Tripetinae. And in the Indian subcontinent itself, these uh, 325 different fruit fly species were identified. And in uh, India, nearly 243 species were described. Then within these uh, species, nearly eight important, economically important uh, fruit fly species are there, which are infesting both uh, fruit crops as well as the vegetable crops. So among these, uh, Bactrocera cucurbita, Bactrocera dorsalis, Bactrocera joneta, Bactrocera tau, Bactrocera caracta, Docus ciliatus, Carpomia vesuviana, and uh, Acanthophilus helianthi are the important species causing maximum damage, especially maximum losses in India. Next, coming to the melon fruit, uh, fruit fly, the Bactrocera cucurbita species, which is having more than 81 cucurbit uh, crops as uh, host crops and causing maximum damage up to 100%, starting from 30 to 100% in different uh, cucurbit crops. And 100% damage, highest damage uh, was reported in the crop cucumber followed by ridge guard and bitter guard. And the least infestation was recorded in the uh, watermelon crop as 28.5% only. Then coming to the materials and methods used in this experimentation. So here we have uh, conducted survey in uh, three different districts of uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Anantapur, Karnal, and Kadapa. In those districts, we have selected the uh, potentially masculine growing uh, mandas, and within each bundle, again, uh, two villages were selected. And in this uh, selected villages, uh, again, two plots, two uh, uh, farmers' fields were selected. And there, we have installed the traps, both methylational and tulip traps, and also uh, for uh, um, collection of the species. And also, we have collected the infested fruit flies. Uh, sorry, in infested fruits from those uh, uh, selected uh, fields. And those were brought to the laboratory and uh, raid for the uh, species. Then after that, after uh, these uh, species were uh, uh, emerged out, both the trap collections as well as the laboratory uh, raid species, they, they are taxonomically, morphological identification, and also their molecular, molecular uh, confirmation was made. So coming to the results here, so uh, in the survey, we have identified uh, four uh, species of fruit flies infesting muscular crop. They are Bactrocera dorsalis, Bactrocera zoneta, Bactrocera caracta, and Zeugodacus cucurbitae species. And their infestation, varying degree of infestation was observed in all the three districts. To say in um, Anantapur, only two species we could able to identify, uh, the uh, Zeugodacus cucurbitae and caracta, Bactrocera caracta, whereas in Kadapa, uh, three species were uh, uh, observed, so that is Bactrocera dorsalis, Bactrocera zoneta, and Bactrocera cucurbitae. Whereas in Karnul district, all the four different uh, species, identified species, were found infesting the muskmelon crop. So these are the adult uh, photographs of the uh, four identified species. So this Jugodacus, external even morphologically also, it can be easy, easily identified from the Bactrocera species uh, because of its. Uh, uh, some reddish coloration uh, compared to the Bactrocera species. Then, after identification, uh, we have also sent these uh, uh, specimens for further confirmation to NBR Bengaluru and uh, uh, confirm the uh, species. And for uh, again for the uh, their confirmation at molecular level, we have ca carried out the PCR uh, um, analysis. Uh, so DNA was identified. Uh, uh, isolated and uh, DNA amplification using the um, uh, universal primer. We have uh, done the um, 
the characterization studies and we found that so all the four species the dna amplification was observed at a uh, very close range of uh, 650 to 700 base pairs uh, of the molecular uh, uh, base pairs and uh, the molecular weights uh, uh, the variation in these molecular weights of these different species were very very uh, close range that means see the uh, uh, in case of batrosera dorsalis and also uh, in correcta the amplification we observed at uh, 690 base pairs a molecular weight and in case of zonata it is 16 695 base pairs and in case of cucurbitae it is uh, 670 base pairs so finally coming to the uh, conclusion so in the uh, uh, rylsima region we, we could able to uh, identify four species infesting the uh, muskmelon crop and similarly their confirmation was made at uh, um, uh, morphological level and also at molecular level um, finally, it can be concluded that uh, um, this uh, species identification in different crops is very, very um, important because of the expanding host uh, range of uh, this Bacrocera species. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you can start, sir. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, this, uh, uh, what is the relative abundance of this species? And uh, how it is ensured the only cucurbitae is common in both places where you collected. Uh, there is a variation of uh, uh, Bacrocera dorsalis in one place is there. Whether all are feeding on muskmelon or not, how it is ensured? So we have collected the specimens, sir, uh, fruit, uh, infested fruits from different locations. And they were uh, they have uh, raised uh, uh, in the laboratory and segregated based on the uh, location, sir. And this uh, later on, that composition was uh, observed. What is the uh, maximum abundant species in this? Maximum abundance is Dugatakas only, sir, Kukurbita. Kukurbita. Yes. Yeah, yes. Ciliatus, not even a single species you could get? No, sir. Only these four we, we could have to Yeah. You suppose if this is the constitution, what should be our uh, management uh, aspect? What? Okay. Yeah, even these species are there. Sir. Uh, how we should proceed with the management of fruit fly holistically? Holistically, so because both the species uh, the, which are infesting the fruits as well as the vegetables are there. So um, uh, both the traps we have to keep, sir. And also the what, what all the integrated pest management aspects are there, they have to be followed, sir. Recommended specifically recommended for food flies. Yeah, that one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Madam, I have uh, one query. You have yeah. used cytochrome oxidase um, uh, for the sequencing work. Sir, you, you, have, sir? Used, you have used the cytochrome oxidase. Yes, sir. Inside, and you have um, uh, identified the um, that uh, size of the amplified product whether you yes. have done any phylogenic uh, analysis uh, analysis with this with those sequences so no sir. no sir sir sequencing studies we, we have not done sir no, no, that is only one object sir. up to this only uh, i have done sir. actually what happens uh, once the amplification is over and the genome size is uh, differing if you do the based on the sequence if you do the phylogenetic analysis then you will get uh, more information about yes, the sir. diversity and the evolution, everything you can get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, that that's the uh, part we, we miss, it, sir. Because you have got the amplification, the product, you get the sequence and do that uh, phylogeny analysis. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I request uh, moderators any information from the organizers. Sir, yes, now close time is nine, seven thirty. Hello, sir. Shall we close the session now, sir? We, we can close and tomorrow nine thirty yeah. shall be done. Yes, sir. By nine, nine of nine thirty, sir. Okay, sir. Nine thirty should be okay. Okay, sir. Okay. I thank uh, Dr. Sridhar who has uh, co-chaired the session for the day and uh, Dr. Arnodayam, Dr. Nishchala, Dr. Dinesh who have been uh, 
doing their reporter work i could see all of them there and uh, spe special thanks to dr tanuja shivaram for coordinating uh, um, uh, from the afternoon she is um, in touch with us and she is coordinating and uh, i thank all the participants for um, waiting uh, till the uh, end of this uh, presentation we will meet tomorrow morning again madam if you want to make any announcement you can make the announcement for the participants no sir that's all sir all the pa remaining participants please please uh, get ready by 9 9:30 9, 9 and uh, all of you i am requesting once again to stick on the time yes 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 tomorrow right. plenary session will be also there so please yes, be yes. on we, time we, tomorrow the... tomorrow 5 plus 2 we will strictly follow post us how much time madam Two. Posters only five. Three plus two. Three plus two. Three plus two. Three plus three plus two. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Tomorrow link will be same. Now that Tanuja link is same. Yes, we'll join yes, by nine thirty. And um, good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. Good night, everyone. Good night. Okay, sir. Thank you.